Good morning. Welcome to the program. A little bouncy. It'll stop shaking in a second. Subscribe if you're not subscribed. We're coming on the air in just a minute. Welcome one and all. It's what makes... Not just men, men. It's what makes people, people. And a lack of it takes all of those things away from you. Who will meet with Steve Kane listeners in no charge? Always. What is the number they can call to make that appointment? 561-953-5490. Oh, my goodness. 561-953-5490. The Steve Kane Show is brought to you by attorney Barry Siegel at the Siegel Law Group. Avoid probate with a revocable living trust. Here we go. Welcome to the show. Make sure you subscribe. Your trust with attorney Barry Siegel. He will give you a $100 gift certificate to Tavolino Italian Restaurant in Coral Springs. Call the Siegel Law Group with nine offices in South Florida, including downtown Fort Lauderdale, Coral Gables, and downtown Miami. 1 855 FLA 37. Hey, Katina. Sarah, welcome, welcome. Here we go. Yes, yes. Welcome to the program, everyone. It's Friday morning, five minutes after six o'clock in the morning. We are here with you live. My name is Brian Craig. This is the Steve Kane Radio Show, Florida's longest running radio show on the radio since 1977. This is almost the most pro Donald Trump radio show in America. I promise you that. You will never hear me criticize Donald Trump ever. It will never happen. Never happen. Welcome, welcome. So much to go into today. Oh, man. And don't forget, don't forget, we are live in Morning Drive, weekday mornings from 6 until 9 a.m. Eastern Time with overnight rebroadcast seven nights a week. We broadcast live on four radio stations and uh, overnights as well. And you can listen to us uh, overnights, midnight till 6 a.m., si uh, seven nights a week, Monday through Friday. You can listen to us midnight till 9 a.m., midnight till 9 a.m., Monday through Friday, and over the weekends, midnight till 6 a.m. And uh, uh, on the overnights and the live show, you can listen to us on four radio stations, AM 1470, 103.9 FM, 95.3 FM, and 96.9. On your FM dial, also check us out on the iHeartRadio app and the TuneIn app, searching for us by our radio station call letters, WWNN, that's two W's and two N's on the iHeart app and the TuneIn app, and watch us in live high-definition video on YouTube. Just subscribe to my YouTube channel, Brian Craig on YouTube, and you can watch us live stream, and there's a live chat going on during the broadcast. If you miss a part of the show, you can always go back later in the day and catch that part on the YouTube, Brian Craig on YouTube. And uh, the live chat is going strong right now. And I do read the chat while I'm broadcasting, and it's nice to see it there. So uh, welcome. So much going on. You know, uh, all this business with the stock market that's going on, the coronavirus. I'm not saying coronavirus is not a major factor in this, but I'll tell you, I think Bernie Sanders is a bigger factor in what's going on with the stock market than anything you could possibly imagine because we have a communist who is uh, the presumed uh, nominee of one of the two major parties. And when you're talking about financial markets, you're talking about future expectations. Not that Bernie Sanders could beat Donald Trump, but when you have a communist, oh no, he's a democratic socialist. Well, but what's a democratic socialist? You know, it's, it's yeah, they, they can't tell you, it's communism. Um. I do full disclosure here. I don't own any stocks. I have zero dollars in the stock market. Now, that doesn't mean I don't have uh, skin in the game, but I, I don't have any money in the stock market. I got out of the stock market a long time ago. And um, I got out of the stock market because of a lot of what I'm hearing happened to not just people in the news, but people I know. Someone, a uh, friend of the family went into a panic yesterday and at the end of the day uh, took all their money out of the stock market yesterday. And I'm assuming at uh, a loss. I've talked to other people I know that took some big hits yesterday and uh, people get in an anxiety state, a complete anxiety state. 
And years ago, my wife and I, we had money in the stock market. We made some money. We lost some money. And then this day and up and down and up and down. And we took a um, a hit due to, I, I, you know, some things. And that was it for me. Um, I find that, I, you know, you hear us talk a lot. I do not gamble. I might occasionally, if I'm at a casino, put some money in a slot machine or I might bet on a, on a horse or something if I'm at the track. But I don't gamble. And um, what I found when I, and I know this will aggravate a lot of people. Well, you don't have no money. You don't have money invested in the stock market, so you have no skin in the game. The stock market is gambling, and it's completely out of your control. And what I came to realize is that the stock market is not only gambling, it's for, in my opinion, uber-rich people you know, who get in and out before any of us uh, laymen know what the heck's going on. And uh, so I haven't had money in the stock market for many years, many years. And I know everybody, I hear these people on the radio talking about their portfolios and everything. There's, they want to impress the audience. I don't think all these guys have money in the market. Maybe they do, but I do not. And I, I got out for, um, th these are the reasons I got out of the stock market. Me and my wife, we made... Uh, money in the market. We lost money. I, I we came out ahead, and at the end of the uh, of the thing. But this, what's going on right now is it, it's gambling. The factors that control market prices are completely out of your control, and people. You see people in an anxiety state. People, you know, and I found myself in an anxiety state. Now I'm prone to be a worry wart, and I do have uh, anxiety issues. I must tell you, I do. I'm not going to pretend I don't. That's what I used to go to Dr. Lemaski about when I was, you know, I'm, I'm not in therapy right now, but when I was in therapy with Dr. Lemaski, she was my therapist before Steve's therapist. I interview, uh, introduced Steve to Dr. Lemaski. It was about a lot of anxiety issues. And, and I found this, being involved in the stock market to be anxiety-inducing. And uh, we got out, and I don't ever plan on being back in it. Uh, now that's just, so you know, I, I want to get that full disclosure out because I, you know, I don't want to act like I'm some big portfolio, you know, guy in the market, and I got all these opinions, and I, I'm gonna tough it out, damn it, I'm gonna stick. You only, you know, you know, you only lose when you sell. I have zero dollars in the stock market, zero. Ugh. Okay, so I want to be completely honest with people about that you know um and i'm not going to get into what i like and what i do and what i would invest in i'm not a you know i you know i'm not i'm not gonna try to i hear these people the, you know, the podcasters and radio guys just trying to impress people all the time with their holdings and they're this and they're that and they're this i have zero dollars in the stock market with that being said um there's several things going on here the coronavirus, which is, in my opinion, a non-issue. I was talking to, I, uh, about this on my podcast last night. By the way, check out my podcast. I'm on mo uh, the Brian Craig Show podcast on most podcast platforms. But I also upload my podcast to my YouTube channel. So if you uh, subscribe to my YouTube channel, Brian Craig on YouTube, you can get my uh, podcast. I had a very good show about Dan Bongino last night on my podcast. Dan Bongino had something major happen to him at CPAC, and I'm not going to talk about it on the radio, but if you check out my podcast last night, you can hear that. But one of the things, uh, other than this incredible thing that happened with Dan Bongino at CPAC, check out my podcast last night. You get all the details. One of the things my wife and I, we were talking about on the Brian Craig Show podcast last night was the coronavirus scare that's going on by the irresponsible media and the Democrats. And the, and I was pointing out to my wife on the podcast last night, there are more people on our street that we live on than have a coronavirus in America. And so many people are in a complete panic over the coronavirus. The coronavirus is playing a role, I guess, in what's going on in the stock market because there's going to be a slowdown of, of, of things coming from China. And there, it, it's only a matter of time before a lot of products from China are refused because people don't want anything that's edible and things like this. You know, So there's a supply chain issue, no doubt about it. And the media 
want to do. But I, I believe if there, and I did hear on Fox Business, they were talking about short sale. I, I'm not going to pretend to be some market guru. It is not my area of expertise. And since I have been out of the market for many years, okay, I, um, you know, I, I don't get involved in these day-to-day -day fluctuations. I was talking to Steve about it. Steve was getting kind of aggravated at me about it because I'm not upset. And he's like, well, I got money in the market. You don't. Well, I'm, I got out long ago. I, I just, I can't live my life watching the Dow Jones go up and down and feel good and feel bad based on things that I have no control over in my life like that. Okay. Um, if I did have mar money in the market right now, I would not be selling because I would be selling at a loss. We have a uh, very seasoned economist as president of the United States. His name is Donald John Trump. He's worth $10 billion. He understands the economy in ways that no president ever has. Ever. And uh, he knows what's going on in the market. Believe me, he knows more than these financial pundits know. And he'll take care of business like he always does because Trump always wins. And I know it, it, it may be easier for me to say, well, since I have, you know, that don't worry and all this because I have zero dollars in the stock market, which I don't think anybody else on the radio would admit. Everybody on the radio wants to act like they're rolling in dough and they're brilliant financial people. They got money all over the place and they're diversified. I have zero dollars in the stock market. Now, that's not saying that I'm destitute and don't do other things. You hear us talk about William Youngerman and the metals all the time. And there's other things too. But uh, I just don't have any money in the market because it is, it is anxiety inducing. It is stress inducing. And it's a, and, and my opinion, uh, uh, most of it's a racket. Most of it's a racket. You know, Wall Street, with the uh, manipulation of, of stock market prices, I'm talking about the movie Wall Street, I, I feel that's a very accurate way things are done by these huge hedge fund guys, these, these huge wealthy people that know how to manipulate the markets. And I just, I can't live my life that way. So I, I'm, I don't have any money in the stock market. I'm sorry. Oh, am, I, am I not impressing people? I'm supposed to come on and talk about my portfolio and how happy I am. And I'm, I'm just, you know, I don't, I, I, I can't, you know, I'm telling you guys the truth. But I believe a major factor, there, there's a couple of major factors going into what's happening with the stock market right now. There's coronavirus. There's no doubt about that. There is the irresponsible media scaring the living hell out of people over something that is no danger to us. That is the coronavirus. And then you also have the irresponsible media, very giddy and excited at, spo at stock market losses because now we got them. Skanky Daniels didn't work. The Mueller report, the impeachment. But now the market's going down. They'll jump off the truck. You're all of a sudden going to hear, if this continues, you're going to hear the media talk about people voting their pocketbook again. Because remember, Bill Maher said, we uh, was talking about the market tanking and the financial crisis how that could help Democrats win. So the irresponsible media are doing two things. One, they're, they're, they're causing a complete panic over the coronavirus, which is no threat to us, in my opinion, in this country. And the irresponsible media are also pushing, hoping, and praying and doing everything they can do to cause a financial crisis because they hate Trump. And they see both of these things as uh, a way to harm Trump's reelection chances. But I think a, a a major factor with what's going on in the economy is the rise of Bernie Sanders. Bernie Sanders is a communist. I don't want to hear any of this democratic socialism crap. You know, Andrew Dice Clay used to have a joke about being bisexual in his stand-up act back in the 80s and early 90s. You know, I, I go, go look it up on YouTube. I'm not, I can't say the joke on the radio, but bisexual, you know, you, you know, that's, that's how it is with Dem democratic socialist or communist. OK, there's no a democratic socialist is a made up term and a label that does not exist. It's communist. And the fact that we have a communist that's the front runner in one of the two major parties who is favorite to get the nomination unless they steal it from him with the super delegates, that has a major factor on the financial future of America when you know we're a capitalist system. The oldest democracy in the world the United States, and we have a communist that is poised to win the nomination of one of the two major parties, that's a major factor as well. And I'll tell you this, if Bernie gets the nomination, oh boy, 
Still can't beat Trump, but there'll be a huge hit financially in this country. And if God help us, he became president, there would be a Great Depression. If Bernie Sanders won the presidency, the financial markets of the United States would collapse. If you have a, a communist, that would be a soft communist revolution. The communist revolution would have made it and won in America if Bernie Sanders became president. Bernie Sanders winning the nomination is damn close to a, a successful communist revolution. And there's no one that can tell me that that is not factoring in to the financial uh, issues that are going on today. All right, let's take our first break. It's Friday. I'm Brian Craig. 19 minutes after 6 o'clock in the morning. Your calls are welcome. Our number is toll-free from anywhere. What's causing this financial issue? Is it just a... I'm just asking your opinions. I'm no expert. Is it just a correction? Is it coronavirus? Is it Bernie Sanders? Is it a combination? one triple eight go cane one that's our number, one 465 2631 Don't go anywhere. Dual life insurance policy only pays for it. If you die, the new life insurance policies allow Steve you to Kane access show. your benefits even while you are hey. still alive. Due to changes in the insurance industry, all life insurance carriers in 2020... No, have I have uh, premiums. Re uh, uh, retirement plans that don't involve the stock market. Mortality tables. People are living longer in America, and that means life insurance premiums are lower. Call Debbie and Dan at I Will Advisors, 954-753-888. Hey, Kathy, my wife's up. More and for a free review of your existing life insurance policy. 954-753-8080. 954-753-8080. If you suffer with diabetes, there's a 25% chance that you'll develop a foot ulcer that can lead to severe health consequences, including amputation. At the sole authority, at little or no cost, you can receive your very own therapeutic shoes and custom inserts. Medicare recipients are entitled to one pair of quality diabetic shoes and three custom inserts. Call the sole authority today, 954-597-7060. Feeling old, tired, broken down? I know, I noticed that. The station's automated at night. There's no one there. So if something goes wrong with the computer, there's no one there to fix it. Sex drive and weight control are just a phone call away. If you want to look good again, feel good again, and function good again, call Boca Raton Center for Age Management at 561 953 5490 or online at brc4am.com. Listen to the Steve King Show on iHeartRadio. All right, welcome back. Yes, yes, I'm Brian Craig. This is the Steve Kane Radio Show. Chilly day in Florida. It was 48 when I woke up. It was 51 at my house when I left. Oh my goodness. I'm wearing two layers, long sleeves. I even wore a jacket. I left the jacket in the car though. But man, it's cold today. Had the heat on in the car. Had the seat heater on in the car. Cold day. All right. So we're talking about everything that's going on with the financial markets. The media are, you know, the media, when they wake up in the morning and do their newsroom prep, what they're thinking is, how can we screw Trump? How, how, how can we harm the future of the Trump administration? How can we play a role in stopping him from getting reelected? How can we get his followers to jump off the Trump train? That's what they do. Whether it's strippers and porn actresses and, you know, sleazy lawyers. Whether, you know, that, that, that's what they do every day. You saw Jim Acosta. We're more honest than you, you son of a, uh, Mr. President. You know, remember that Acosta in India? What a disgraceful person. You know, so they're they're uh, hyping up uh, something that's not a danger, coronavirus, not a danger to Americans. They're um, trying to cause a financial crisis, which they talked about months ago would be a great way to stop the Trump re-election. So we're talking about all these things. Your calls are welcome. One triple eight go cane one. Good morning. You're on the radio. What's your name? Morning, Brian. This is Lewis in Deerfield. How are you? All right. It's chilly Deerfield today. Yeah, I haven't been out yet. Um, listen, Brian, I just uh, wanted to mention something. Um, it just occurred to me. Um, um, Trump might win um, uh, California's um, electoral vote. Really? How's he going to win the, the electoral votes? Of how's, he gonna, how's that going to happen? Tell me. <clears throat> well, um, I'm pretty sure that California and a number of other states um, have tried to pass laws 
that have actually passed laws that um, may be challenged in the courts, but what they have tried to do legally or illegally is um, to give all of their electoral <coughs> votes to the person that wins the popular vote. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So how does that help Trump in California? Because you got a Democrat state where you've got who knows how many millions of, of uh, illegal aliens vote in the election in California. So how does Trump win in a state where we have so many foreign illegals voting? It doesn't matter how many votes there are in California. If Trump wins the overall popular vote in the country. Oh, in the country. Oh, I thought you meant in the state. Oh, that'll never happen. That'll never pass. That'll never pass in California. That'll never pass. No, where they, it's, and it's been signed by the governor? It's a bill? It's one of their things? Yeah. I believe so. I, I believe so. I don't know. I don't think so. I don't know. Well, well the Democrats, have, have, the Democrats are, the Democrats, when they lose, are always talking about doing away with the Electoral College. And, and I was I was mentioning this a, a few months ago when this was a big issue. I was reading the uh, a, a book written by Jefferson Davis, who was the Democrat senator who was the president of the Confederacy. And Jefferson Davis in the 1880s, 1890s, towards the end of his life, wrote a history of the Confederate States of America. And about half of that book is him griping about the Electoral College and its unfairness because... Abraham Lincoln didn't win the popular vote and uh, won only because of the Electoral College. So the Democrats since 1860 have been talking about uh, doing away with the Electoral College. And the Electoral College is so important because without it, New York State and California would be choosing the presidents. I agree with all, everything you said. Uh, however, there is... Uh, a serious push underway by a number of states, including, I believe, California. The number might be as many as 20. Yeah. All right, well, I'll, I'll check into it. Listen, thanks for the call. Mike in Louisiana, you're on the radio. Oh, Brian, you know, you know, uh, I, I do have a little money in, uh, in the stock market, but I'm, I'm pretty sure I'm, it's been one of the safest things. It's in energy and stuff, and this, this president loves energy. You know, loves oil, loves any type of energy, uh, getting any type of energy, getting our oil flowing and stuff. So I'm pretty sure that that's pretty safe for me right now, as long as somebody like this president is in office. Now, if a Democrat like Bernie Sanders gets in office and they don't, they want the new Green Deal and they want to get rid of oil and all that stuff, you know. I, Listen, mo mo most people in the, in the, you know, I... Most people in the stock market at your level are people that if you, I mean, I'm not going to ask you how much money you have in the market or anything, I'm not, but, but the money that you have in the stock market is I'm, very small, probably even by your, own, by your own standards, not a lot of money. So if it disappeared today, it wouldn't be life-changing for you. And, you know, and, and I, you know the, the thing about what's going on in the stock market, everything in the economy is based on on the future. And the uncertainty in the American future right now is not about coronavirus, it's about Bernie Sanders. And I, I just would tell you that when you have someone who is a communist, who's about to win South Carolina and a whole bunch of states come Tuesday, that's a big threat to the financial future of the capitalist system of the United States. Because even when he loses, there's a lot of foreshadowing going on there. People are getting more used to these commie candidates. I think that, I, and, and that's, a, that's a huge factor. It really is. And that, I mean, think show. about this. What do they call these countries? You know, hey, the Democratic Republic of uh, yeah. Germany. Or the communist, All the communist countries, yeah. yeah. Basically, communist countries, you know, communist... The People's Republic, you know, exactly. You know, and, and this is a this is a guy in Bernie Sanders who went who went and who went and uh, honeymoon in Russia. Moscow, Moscow, yeah. Well, you know, listen, Donald Trump is an economist. He's got a great degree in economics. He doesn't take advice from PhDs that have never worked in the private sector when there's an economic issue. 
Trump knows what's going on. He understands the economy and the markets like no other president or politician ever has. And things will be fine. Trump knows what he's doing. And it'll happen on a dime. I, hey, Mike, I got to let you run only because of the quality of your phone. It, uh, okay, but appreciate it. All right, good morning. You're on the radio. All right, Mike. <clears throat> Um, you're, you're kidding me, right? Of course not. Of course not. I, I, I watch Lego Wars. Please. I caught it because I wanted to see what she wants. She's going to say because I believe after uh, Trump said that he's she's, she's going to call it. Oh, she's going to be the nominee? A woman who... who uh, oh, Okay. No, no, no. She's gonna buy out Saturday night. Oh, she's gonna be out Saturday night. My, I'm predicting that Sanders. And again, I'm gonna be the, uh, you overnight people on the weekend. I I predict that Sanders is the favorite to win South Carolina. Certainly come in second. I think he's the favorite across the board. I'm hearing blacks in South Carolina, black voters, and they don't like any of these Democrats. And Bernie Sanders, to me, seems to have more support than any of them. Well, the one thing that stood out about the time I was. Uh... They asked her about abortion. Mm -hmm. she, she, was, she did not vote when they uh, did the 20-week term limit on abortion. And she said she would have voted with the Democrats. Oh, five-month abortion? Yeah, her answer uh, three different times was, uh, I, would, I would vote with the Democrats, uh, I believe in Ronald versus Wade. So she's basically saying it's okay. She does not have a problem. Well, you know, okay, here's here's the thing. You know, here's the thing. I've been talking a lot about this in the last couple of weeks. You know, wh why is Bernie Sanders winning and all these other Democrats are getting creamed? They're all uh, – uh, Bernie Sanders, even though he's an old man with a hunchback, right, who gets around like, uh, you know, he's running a very modern campaign like President Trump. All of these other Democrats – Klobuchar, Mayor Pete thinks, I'm gay, I'm running, I'm hip, you know. They're all running campaigns from the 80s and 90s. I'm talking about their style and what they're talking about. And Amy Klobuchar, who's some old blue-haired feminist era talking point about, it's a woman's body to choose. This is my opinion. The generation of child, by the way, uh, Amy Klobuchar has as much chance of becoming pregnant as I do. I think she's beyond the menopause era. So I thought only women who could become pregnant are supposed to render opinions on abortion. But Amy Klobuchar, the generation of childbearing women, how old are women in their childbearing years? We'll start at 18. But women between 18 and, say, mid-30-ish, you know, 40 on the long end if they want to have a Down syndrome baby. You know, some of these women have babies too old and then they have Down syndrome and they wonder why, you know, and then they drive around with puzzle piece stickers on the back windows of their car for the next 20 years. But um, the, the women that are of childbearing years, when Klobuchar talks about abortion, those are women, the, the childbearing age women grew up in an era with the abortion pill over the counter available to the drugstore. And surgical abortion is not an issue with women anymore. It really isn't, uh, except in rare instances. Uh, they've, they've got those morning after pills and things like this that are done and used. And that's just not an issue. And they're running these issues, you know, of uh, that are so out of, t she's talking about issues that are so out of date. It's like, it's it, it, talking about the debate over abortion in the fifth month is like having, literally, I'm serious, is like having a debate over VHS or beta. You know, you know, you remember, you're old enough to remember, you know what I'm talking about. It's so pathetic. And, and Fox News, they uh, screw Fox News. You know, the bunch of Trump haters in disguise over there. Why would they even entertain such a stupid discussion? A balance... What, what, they want to have a the balance is we hate Trump. Let's find people that hate him more. There's no balance on. I do like Bill Hemmer in the afternoon. I will give you that. I do like Bill Hemmer. Yeah, but 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 abortion. The, the midday lineup is not bad either. He's been pretty. It's pretty good. The, uh, yeah. Ed Henry. He seems pretty good. Yeah, Ed Henry. I I never thought Ed Henry would be back full time on Fox when he had. Remember he had that stripper girlfriend in Vegas a few years ago. Yeah, I, I'm. Sh 
Charles Payne. And, and yeah, well, he, Charles Payne was with, um, uh, oh, that white blonde girl. I, we had her on the show. Sonny, Neil, Hugh, something like that, yeah. But uh, she was a pundit. She was a pundit. A married lady was a pundit. And, and Ed Henry, had, you know, the, Ed Henry's Vegas stripper, though. She wasn't a young girl. She was, like, close to 40. I was a little surprised, you know. But look at Ed Henry. You know, I'm so happy for Ed Henry because... Uh, now he's off of that Fox and Friends weekend where Pete Hedgeworth or whatever was always challenging him to athletic events to make him look like a fool. All right, let's do, who can do the most push-ups? Me, the veteran, or you, the, you know, the, you know, as much as I like, I like Pete on the weekends on Fox, I always thought that was kind of petty of him to challenge Ed Henry to athletic events every weekend on Fox and Friends. It was so, what, how pathetic. What a, it came off like a bully, didn't he? <laughs> I know. I, yeah. Uh, I will say that you were right on something you mentioned yesterday. It was the, uh, the core, the Molson core shooter. Well, no, oh, I was right about what the caller said yesterday. The caller, uh, Rick the Deficit Hawk, ca called in from a with a prediction that the shooter would be black in Milwaukee and the victim's all white. And he's from Milwaukee. Right. Were any of the... For, the shooter was black. What about the victims? One of them was Spanish. I think the other ones were white. Well, Spanish is the same as white in the in the in in that context, but... You know, yeah. So I just looked at the names. I didn't. They just put the names out. I don't, I don't know what these people look like. Well, Rick, Rick the Deficit Hawk. I I said this yesterday. There's no way to know this for sure, but I'll stand by it today. He's from Milwaukee. He's a snowbird. He's down here. He's not an old guy. He he had some inside info from the local news in Milwaukee and was calling in to try to make it sound as if he's uh, a great predictor of future events. I I I don't. I think he had the tip off. From Milwaukee news sources, I don't think he he. Know someone, and maybe know someone in the police department. Or maybe the local news was reporting it somewhere, and they and, and it didn't make national. You know, I I don't buy that he was on the cutting edge. What what do you think about that? Was I too hard on him? Uh no, I I, I think he he had it. I think somebody told him. Yeah. Released that like yesterday around. Yeah. Kind of late in the afternoon. Yeah. Released the names. Yeah. And I saw it on uh, on the internet. I, yeah. And I showed the guy, and I'm like, "Oh, the." What kind of what kind of beer did they, do you know? What kind of uh, beer they made at the plant at that Milwaukee plant? What kind of beer? Yeah, I think that was an actual uh, corporate office beer plant, but I don't know. What, show the guy that makes beer. And if he was saying there's like a thousand people that work there, and everybody knew everyone because they always walked around each other. Yeah. You know what I wonder? You know what I, you know, you know what I wonder? I wonder if, I, I, I'm not joking here, you know, with coronavirus, I wonder if Corona beer sales are up. Because, well, you know, the, the, the reason I say that is, you know, when you go to buy something, name recognition, and Corona is in everyone's mind, are people, is, is, it, good, is it good or bad for Corona beer? And I bet you Corona beer sales will be up over coronavirus. Yeah. All right. Anyway, appreciate the call. Thanks so much. Oh, man, we got to take our break. I'm late. It's 37 minutes after the hour. I'm Brian Craig. This is the Steve Kane Radio Show, Florida's longest running radio show on the radio since 1977. Let's take that break and we'll be back. Don't you go anywhere. You've heard the jingle and seen the commercials, and that's right. You will get the best night's sleep you've ever had with a My Pillow. Have you not gotten your My Pillow yet? Right now is the best time to do it. That's right, Brian. Coors hey, and Miller. This is Brian's wife, Kathy, and this is the best time to get a My Pillow. They have amazing deals. Take advantage of them now. Go to mypillow.com, click the radio listener link, and you will see all these great deals. Like the buy one My Pillow, get one for free. There's a BOGO offer right now on the Giza Dream Sheets. Buy one set of My 
my Pillow Giza Dream Sheets and get the second set free. You gotta love BOGO deals. They're the best. And you can take advantage of so many right now at MyPillow.com. There's a lot of other deals, too. Again, go to MyPillow.com, click on that radio listener link, and you've got to use the promo code KANE, K-A-N-E, at checkout to get these incredible deals. So go right now to MyPillow.com, click the radio listener special, make sure to use that promo code KANE, K-A-N-E, at checkout to take advantage yes. of all of the great deals. Yes. You can also order by My wife's in the chat. 800 716 4879 Make sure to use the promo code KANE, I'll say when I get back. K-A-N-E, 1-800-716-4879. The Steve Kane Show is brought to you by attorney Barry Siegel at the Siegel Law Group. Avoid probate with a revocable living trust. $350 for single people, $450 for married couples. When you complete your trust with attorney Barry Siegel, he will give you a $100 gift certificate to Tavolino Italian Restaurant in Coral Springs. Call the Siegel Law Group with nine offices in South Florida, including downtown Fort Lauderdale, Coral Gables, and downtown Miami. 1-855-FLA-3782. Listen to the Steve King Show on iHeartRadio. Welcome back, everyone. I'm Brian Craig. This is the Steve Kane Show. Someone in the YouTube live chat during the break, when the uh, My Pillow commercial was playing, they said, "Do you really sleep on a My Pillow?" Uh, yes. <laughs> what do you think? I'm lying in all of these ads. Of course, I I sleep on a My Pillow. My wife sleeps on a My Pillow. My dog sleeps on a My Pillow. My dog and cats sleep on the My Pillow pet bed. Steve Kane sleeps on a my pillow that uh, my wife Kathy and I got him as a gift. Uh, we sleep under the my pillow Giza Dream cotton sheets, and I got to tell you, I was talking to the my pillow people yesterday, and they told me there's a you know we have this special going on right now at my pillow. When you use the promo code Kane at checkout, K A N E, you get um, uh, two sets of my pillow Giza cotton dream sheets for the price of one. It's a BOGO offer. And let me tell you, uh, Giza, they're 100% Giza cotton, which is amazing. And uh, it says right here, I'm at MyPillow.com. This is Mike Lindell. He says, um, uh, the Giza cotton dream sheets from my pillow are using the best cotton from Giza, only grown in a region between the Sahara Desert and the Mediterranean Sea and the Nile River. And, you know, a lot of, uh, sheets they claim at, at other companies claim to be Giza cotton, but it's a small percentage. The uh, My Pillow Giza Dream Sheets are 100% Giza cotton. I don't know what it is about this Giza cotton, but it's a miracle uh, fabric because no matter what the temperature is, you your body is the perfect temperature under the Giza cotton Dream Sheets. It's cold this morning. I'm warm under the sheets. If it's hot, I'm at the perfect cool body temperature under these sheets. And one thing I love about the My Pillow Giza Cotton Dream Sheets is when you make the bed, the sheets fit perfectly on the mattress. You know, a lot of times when you're making the bed, you've got that um, what do you call the 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 uh, under sheet, the one that has the elastic on it? What's that one called? You know. And uh, was, my wife and I were talking about this. The first time we we made the bed with the My Pillow Giza cotton dream sheets, it was amazing. The fitted sheet, yeah, the fitted sheet on the bottom, it fits perfectly. A lot, you know, you ever have these other sheets when you go to put the fitted sheet on, it's like you got to take all of your strength to pull it over the corner of the bed, and then you go to the other corner, and it's like ugh, you, you, you're almost ripping the sheet because they don't fit. The uh, My Pillow Giza dream sheets, you could just do it with one finger, boom, and it's on all four corners of the bed. Same goes for the top sheet. And uh, right now, when you go to MyPillow.com, click the radio listener specials, use the promo code KANE, K-A-N-E, uh, you can get two sets of the MyPillow Giza Dream Sheets for the price of one. They got a BOGO offer there, but you got to use the promo code KANE, K-A-N-E. So to answer that guy in the chat room, yes, I use all these MyPillow products. And you know what? I've bought all of them. The first round, uh, we didn't. Uh, they weren't advertising with us, so we didn't have the uh, KANE, K-A-N-E uh, discount. I paid full price for the uh for the pillows and the sheets i didn't get a bogo offer with the dream sheets uh but you can uh we did use the uh promo code cane on the my pillow pet bed which you can save 30 percent off on that so uh yeah that's right i do use them all right so welcome back so we're talking about what's going on here in the market 
and coronavirus. There is so much fake news going on about coronavirus. And the, the news, they've got this new thing now that the White House has said that the, the doctors can't speak out. They're, they're clamping down on the information and they can't talk. Everything's got to go through Pence. They're not silencing or censoring. They're trying to have a coherent message. You know, when, when you have the media and Nancy Pelosi causing a panic, you know, remember Nancy Pelosi said, Trump fired all the experts, didn't replace them, and there's no funding, it's too late, we're all dead. That's what that uh, lady said, the speaker said the other day, pretty much. President Trump is instilling confidence and calm, not panic like Nancy. And they want to have a, a coherent message. That's what they're talking about here. Okay. The other thing I'll tell you about um, uh, the coronavirus media scare is none of us are in danger. How many people right now have coronavirus in the United States who got it here? I'm not talking about those people that they flew back from Japan. How many people have gotten it in the United States? The, depending on where you are, there could be uh, more people in the building you're in right now then have the coronavirus. We're a country of over 300 million. Right? So, come on. Give me a break. The media want Trump to lose. They want Trump to lose. And will do whatever they can do to help bring that about. Another thing that's going on is they want to put more money. You hear these Democrats. It's all about money. Um, Elizabeth Warren wants to take the wall money and put that in the coronavirus. I heard, uh, I, was it Nancy? Are they talking about $10 billion, the Democrats? That $10 billion they want to put in the coronavirus? See, this... this why do they want the ten billion dollars? Whatever the I, I, was it ten billion dollars? I heard ten billion dollars. Did I hear that right? I thought it was million, but I I I heard B, eight point five billion. You know, back in the days when we had a manned space program in the space shuttle, you know, a space shuttle cost two billion. So they want as much money as it took to build four space shuttles, and then money left over. They want more money than it costs to... How much does an aircraft carrier cost these days? About a billion? They want more money than it costs to build an aircraft carrier to put into coronavirus. What are they talking about here? Well, I'll tell you what they're talking about. One thing the Democrats have a problem with is they're not able to get their money laundering campaign going on with their donor friends. And they're trying to use coronavirus to give money to uh, their, their earmark people. Don't you get that's what's going on here? Why do you think they're talking about all these absurd amounts of money towards coronavirus? Does anyone know, not including these people that they brought back from Japan, okay, how many people have gotten coronavirus in America? Not the people that were brought back. I think it's like one on the other side of the country, right? In California. Maybe it's more now, you know, the numbers are changing all the time. But even if you factor in the people they brought back into the country, which was stupid. I heard Trump was pretty pissed off about that. It's a handful of people handful of people and there's they're talking about putting 8.5 billion dollars with a b into it that's how the government works right that's how the government works hey listen the donors got to get paid back somehow don't let a good crisis go to waste trump's talking about a few million dollars and that's probably more money than he needs 
I'll tell you, it's absolutely amazing, isn't it? All right, listen, we'll take our last break so we can be on time here for the rest of the show. We'll take our last break of the first hour. I'm Brian Craig. This is the Steve Kane Radio Show, Florida's longest-running radio show. On the radio since 1977, let's take our break. We'll be back. Don't go anywhere. Stop paying an outrageous fortune for your tires. Go easy on your budget and buy your tires at Friendly Tire and Margate, where they have all the major brands like Goodyear and Firestone at discount prices that absolutely can't be beat. Steve Kane's tires for his Toyota van at the other shops, $175 a tire. At Friendly Tire, just $75 a tire. That's a $100 savings per tire. Tires for my daughter Emily's car, $135 at the shops around town. The price at Friendly Tire, only $65. That's a $70 savings per tire. These prices are out the door and on the road. Free mounting and balancing and no added charges. Friendly Tire have a great selection of good used tires too, starting at just $30 for most cars. Call my good buddy Friendly Mike at Friendly Tire. Tell him what you drive and he will give you a great low price right over the phone. 954-977-9445. 954-977-9445. Online, FriendlyTire.net. 95.3 FM, 96.9 FM, 103.9 FM, and AM 1470. WWNN Pompano Beach is the Florida Money Talk Network. Denture wearers, are messy adhesives ruining the taste of your food? Is it painful for you to eat? Does the constant <coughs> denture movement affect your speech? Are you always worried that your dentures will fall out while you're talking or laughing? Do you have sore spots? You are not alone. These are common problems that can be solved simply with dental implants. This is Steve Kane, and I want to introduce you to Brighton Dental Care, where the Kane family goes for all our dental needs. Brighton Dental Care doesn't want cost to stop you from being able to eat the foods you love again and live in comfort. That's why, for Steve Kane listeners, they're offering implants, get this, for just $3,500. That includes two implants plus a lower denture. Now, if you go to a dentist in Boca or an Aventura, they're going to no, charge please. you $6,000 for the exact same implants and denture. That's right, $6,000, but at Brighton Dental Care, just $3,500, and that includes the two implants plus your lower denture. Laugh and live with confidence. Call Brighton Dental Care at 954-922-4633, 954-922-4633, and online at brightondentalcare.com. Be sure to ask about special discounts for our military veterans. <clears throat> I'm not coughing, I'm clearing my throat. All right, welcome back. I'm Brian Craig. This is the Steve Kane Radio Show. You know, Friendly Tire, open on Saturdays, people. Friendly Tire is open on Saturdays. They're open today to Friday. But if you can't make it into Friendly Tire, because I know, I talked to Mike over there. We have listeners that drive more than an hour each way because the deals are so good at Friendly Tire. They are open on Saturdays. Call Friendly Mike. He'll give you a quote right over the phone. 954-977-9445. 954-977-9445. Online, FriendlyTire.net. All right, now there's a TikTok video going around of a girl who um, is a young girl who, sh who um, shows her pregnancy test, showing that she's pregnant. The TikTok, now do you, do you guys all know, TikTok is, um, it's a new, it, I don't know if it's new, it's been around a little while, but it's, it's an app. A lot of people say it's a Chinese spy app, but uh, millions of people use it around the world. It's very popular with young people. And it's for quick videos that are like a minute or less long, and it's very popular. And uh, this girl made a TikTok video showing her stick that she peed on, showing her pregnant, showing her belly that looks like it has a bump in it. And then she it shows her going to Planned Parenthood and having her legs up in the stirrups, doing an ultrasound, and having an abortion. And the title of the video she put on a graphic says, Abortion Time Number Two. And it shows her in the waiting room. Uh, she says there's two abortion moods. And people are saying this is showing her having an abortion. And uh, this has been seen by uh, over 4 million people, this video. That's how popular TikTok is. Um, I did, if you go to my Twitter, you can see the TikTok video. I think the video is uh fake. I'm not saying that she's not pregnant. I'm not saying she didn't have the ultrasound because we see it. I don't think she had an abortion. 
Um, I think uh, it looks like she has an abortion. I think she is definitely promoting abortion. Lila Rose uh, is, is what brought this to my attention. She's circulating this around. But I think the video is um, fake. They did go to Planned Parenthood and everything. But I'm saying I don't think the girl had an abortion. Um, not during this video. And uh, this girl shows herself and her friends. Over 4 million have seen it. It may even be well over 4 million now. I don't know what the latest is, but I think it's fake. And it's being circulated around, and, and, um, and, and I, I think I might, I might delete it off of my Twitter because I, I don't know. It's, it's kind of creepy, um, you know. But if you, Lila Rose on Twitter um, has it if you want to go and see it. But I, um, I don't think it's uh, real. I don't think it's real. I think it's fake. Um, it's getting a lot of discussion around. I, f I find it hard to believe that it's, it's, it's real. Um, but P go to Lila Rose on Twitter. Lila Rose, if you don't know, she, uh, she's a very strong pro-life activist. She did those undercover videos about 10 years ago where she posed as a 15-year-old girl impregnated by uh, an adult man and went to Planned Parenthood places and they were giving her you know, all the abortion information. But this um, TikTok video, the girl going to Planned Parenthood, is probably one of the most viral videos on the net right now. And uh, completely fake, completely staged. I'll tell you, though, the problem, though, with it is that the girl in it thinks it's pretty funny. And it's, uh, it's unfortunate that she thinks something's so funny about it. And um, the truth will come out because her and her friends are on the video. She used it on her account. So you'll probably see it on Fox News Channel. So the girl is, her identity is not secret. So the truth about the girl eventually is going to come out. But um, no, it, 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 to me, the way to, you could go look at the video. Go to Lila Rose's Twitter account. You watch the TikTok video of the girl showing her pregnancy test, driving the Planned Parenthood, going in the Planned Parenthood, the waiting room and in the stirrups and everything. And you tell me, is that real? Or is it staged? Most things on, you know, these viral video things like that are staged. And they go viral, and then you find out later they were staged. There was um, a guy a few years ago who, <laughs> he was uh, on YouTube, and he had a gun out, and he uh, shot a hole in his ceiling, and the stuff fell all over him. And then, and then later, it came. It went viral, and it was fake. And he he showed how he faked the video. So, I find more often than not, when a video goes viral online, at least half the time, it's a totally staged event. And this one certainly is. And 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 you know, the only thing to be I I think to be upset about it is is that this girl thinks having an abortion is funny. Um, I'd like to know, okay, they, sh they sh see if we get the truth about it, it'd be very interesting because she shows the pregnancy test. She shows her belly, which has a bump. I don't know if she's pregnant or just fat. You never know. And then they show her getting a, uh, an ultrasound in some type of medical facility. She's got a gown on and her legs are in the stirrups and she gets an ultrasound. So I guess she's pregnant. I'd like to know if that part's even real. And when she was inside this office and inside the medical facility, was it really Planned Parenthood or was it a regular doctor? I'd like to know, you know, just out of, out of curiosity because this is being talked about so much online. It's amazing what, uh, you know, what happens. So listen, we're about done with the first hour. We got two hours to go. It is Friday, very exciting stuff here. Lots to go into today. Get some of our audio sound bites after the top of the hour break. You know, I, I believe that the, uh, as I was saying at the top of the show, just do a little recap. The financial fears and coronavirus are fake news. Um, they're trying to turn coronavirus into the new Russian narrative of Trump's incompetence. Trump is, is one thing I, I don't even think is up for debate is Trump is probably the most competent person there is that's ever been the president. He always surrounds himself with the best of the best. That's what his television show, The Apprentice, was all about. His Apprentice was a competition 
among people that had business degrees from prestigious universities and experience in business. And it was a, it was a competition among the best of the best in business to win an opportunity to be the apprentice of Donald Trump. Donald Trump surrounds himself always by the best in their field, except Betsy DeVoe Voss. OK, I'll, you know, I'll give you that. So, um, you know, he is anything but incompetent, I got to tell you. And, 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 but the media always want to portray Trump as wrong on everything. And that's, and that's the way of it. So we'll talk more about that after the top of the hour. My name is Brian Cray. You are listening to the Steve Kane Radio Show, Florida's longest-running radio show, on the radio since 1977. Our number is toll-free from anywhere, one 888 go one 888-465-2631. 888-465-2631. Don't forget, subscribe to my YouTube channel. Watch us live stream the radio show in high definition on YouTube. Just search Brian Craig on YouTube. Brian Craig on YouTube. And uh, I also archive the shows there so you can catch the uh, show even after it's over on YouTube. Brian Craig on the YouTube. All right, one hour down, two to go. We'll take our break. Hour number two begins right now. 5.3 FM, 96.9 FM, 103.9 FM, and AM 1470. WWNN Pompano Beach is the Florida Money Talk Network. Many people are suffering with depression, anxiety, addiction, trauma, loneliness, low self-esteem, and problems with intimacy. Day and night, they struggle to make it through. If you're feeling overwhelmed, confused, frustrated, lost, and fear never being able to find satisfaction in your intimate relationships. It's time to be proactive. Call me. Let's talk. I am Dr. Janae Lomaski, a licensed psychologist. You can reach me at 561-777-2021. That's 561-777-2021. Or you can find my number at stevecaneshow.com. President Trump here. Join Steve Kane and Brian Craig on the Steve Kane Trump 2020 Victory Cruise on board the Celebrity Edge. The cruise will be to celebrate my re-election. Don't be a loser, be a winner, just like me. And join Steve Kane and Brian Craig on the Steve Kane Trump 2020 Victory Cruise. Thank you, Mr. President. Join Steve Kane and me, Brian Craig, celebrating the victory of President Trump as we sail December 6th out of Fort Lauderdale on a second-day Trump 2020 victory cruise. First stop, San Juan, Puerto Rico. Second stop, Tortola, British Virgin Islands, and then St. Martin. Call in at Cruise and Travel Depot, 561-244-5779. 561-244-5779, and join us celebrating the re-election of President Trump. 561-244-5779. This is right back. Craig. I've been telling you about the great deals and incredible customer service at Friendly Tire on both new tires and used tires. One of our listeners, Antonio, went to Friendly Tire and called to share with us his experience of buying used tires at Friendly Tire in Margate. Good morning. You're on the radio. Hey, yes, Brian. I want to give you a quick testimony about the tire place of the Margate, Friendly Tire. Friendly Tire is everything you think it would be, man. I went up there and got me some uh, used tires. And when I went up there, he was very courteous. My whole family's going for hours, man. Everything you said it was going to be, man, I appreciate you for that, man, and uh, I, I, Mike's a great guy, man. Well, what's your name? Antonio. All right, Antonio. Hey, I've been, I'm glad we could save you and your family lots of money on tires at Friendly Tire. Oh, no doubt, man. Thanks All so right. much, man. Do what Antonio did. Stop into Friendly Tire and find incredible deals on both new and used tires. Give Friendly Mike a call right now. 954-977-9445. 954-977-9445. And Mike will give you a quote right over the phone. 954-977-9445 for Friendly Tire in Margate. The Steve Kane Show is brought to you by Attorney Barry Siegel at the Siegel Law Group. Avoid probate with a revocable living trust. $350 for single people, $450 for married couples. When you complete your trust with attorney Barry Siegel, he will give you a $100 gift certificate to Tavolino Italian Restaurant in Coral Springs. Call the Siegel Law Group with nine offices in South Florida, including downtown Fort Lauderdale, Coral Gables, and downtown Miami. 1-855-FLA-7-82. <coughs> Listen to the Steve Kane Show on iHeartRadio. Just search for help. 
All right, we are back. My name is Brian Craig. You are listening to the Steve Kane Radio Show, Florida's longest-running radio show on the radio since 1977. Welcome back, one and all. So Trump had Diamond and Silk and other African Americans at the White House yesterday. And uh, a guy who used to play for the Vikings, Jack Brewer, said that he's the first black president yesterday. And uh, let me play this for you. This is, uh, this is the White House, and then there were some people very upset about this. Jack Brewer at the White House with Trump yesterday. <clears throat> okay, he said, man, you are the first black president. And people are very upset about that, which you'll hear in a moment how upset they are. But um, I know a lot of people may say, well, wait a minute. Barack Obama was the first black president. What's Jack Brewer talking about? And actually, they, uh, they used to say Bill Clinton was the first black president because he, uh, you know, liked Southern food and played the saxophone on the uh, Arsenio Hall show. And uh, we saw him play the saxophone one time, didn't we? Did he ever play it again? Did he just learn a few couple notes there? I, I don't know. Did, he, did Bill Clinton really play the saxophone or did he learn for his appearance on the Arsenio Hall show. I, I don't think I ever saw him play the sax again. Well, anyway, you know, what's he talking about there? Why, and, and you hear Diamond and Silk going nuts when, when he says you're the first black president. And I, I think what Jack Brewer means is that Donald Trump is the first black president to actually do things to help the black community and care. Even Barack Obama, you know, there was a lot of, of, of black people were expecting a lot with the uh, election of Barack Obama, namely reparations. Uh, reparations was a big discussion and it disappeared during the Obama era. I know Bloomberg's trying to bring it back. You know, you, you've got $65 billion. Why don't you give $60 billion in re reparations? Live off the little $5 billion you got, you'll have left, uh, Bloomberg. But... I believe a lot of African Americans were expecting reparations when Obama became president. And blacks, I think, were very much left behind during the Obama administration. And I think what Jack Brewer is saying is that President Trump is doing more for the black community than any of these presidents since Lincoln. And that's what he means by that. He doesn't mean he's actually black, that Obama wasn't black. You know, and all this. I, I think people know. Now, on CNN last night, they just had a meltdown on CNN. Keith Boykin, who's always pissed off when he's talking about Trump and people. He's a, a pundit over there on CNN. He's on with Don Lemon. I know Don Lemon. He likes to get drunk and go on CNN on New Year's Eve. And uh, he's very upset at Jack Brewer. Listen. The idea that anybody would sit in a room with Donald Trump and call him the first black president after we had Barack Obama as the president of the United States shows just what kind of Uncle Tom's were sitting in that room in the Ooh. first place. That's ridiculous. It's just an outrage that they would even, <coughs> anybody would sit in that room and say something like that. It's a shocking, appalling, disgusting well, thing to say. Yes, I think that's offensive, but I do think that Democrats have to pay attention to the fact that right now he has the, the, the playing field <coughs> by himself. All right, and having said that, voters. everyone. Okay, now that, you know, okay, that, that lady, I don't know who that lady is at the end. And this idea of calling Uncle Tom, Uncle Tom gets such a bad rap, you know. Have any of these people ever read Uncle Tom's Cabin? I had to read it once for school. It's a very disturbing book, difficult to read. But uh, Uncle Tom ends up being a hero at the end of that book, if you actually read Uncle Tom's Cabin. But the, the, the second pundit at the end, whose name I don't know, I, I've only heard one other person on CNN say what she was saying, and that's Van Jones. And as soon as she started talking about the reality, Don Lemon couldn't get away from that conversation fast enough. But the Democrats have been taking the black vote for granted for a long time, and black people are waking up to that. And South Carolina, where the black vote first comes into play in the election season, well, you're going to see they're going to see some big changes because you've seen the focus groups and interviews with black. South Carolina voters, they don't like any of these Democrats, and they're tired of being taken advantage of, and they understand the great financial gains that African Americans have received under President Trump. So, you know, the Democrats, one of the things that's costing the Democrats the election is that they refuse to acknowledge Trump's popularity among African Americans and are in denial about why so many African Americans are in support of Donald Trump and just continually taking the black vote for granted. 
when you see these Democrats go to South Carolina and pay off all the black ministers, like that's like it's 1988 and black ministers got juice in South Carolina. It tells you how out of touch and how much for granted they take the black vote down there. All right, let's go to the phones. One triple eight, go cane one. That's our number. Toll free call from anywhere. One triple eight four six five twenty six thirty one. Triple eight four six five twenty six thirty one. You're on the radio. Good morning. <clears throat> It's Jeff from Maine. Jeff in, in a, it's got to be cold in Maine because it's uh, about 50 degrees here in South Florida. Yeah, I put 25. Which, oh, my goodness. It getting really cold last night, and it, and it didn't. Oh, man, 25. That's pretty damn cold by Florida standards. So what's on your mind, Jeff? We were supposed to get like eight inches of snow, and we ended up getting nothing. Let me ask you something. Is Crabapple Cove a real town in Maine? That's where Hawkeye Pierce is from, you know. Oh, there is a... Okay, so it's real. Hawkeye Pierce, MASH. Yeah. Cranberry Island. Yeah. Okay, it's a real place. Okay, all right. So what's on your mind, Jeff? Well, on your title, on your video, it says, um, is Bernie trying to take Trump, that, no, the, the Dow down, and something about the coronavirus? Uh, I heard it, and I'm not sure where, if it was OAN News, but the Dems and the mainstream news media are going to try to blow the coronavirus into a like a, a hot issue to cause the um, the Dow to go down to try to bring um, Trump down. That they they're so they know they have no one to beat them. They need to crash the Dow and put fear in the American people, and it's just crazy. Well, if you if you remember Jeff, a f a few months ago, Bill Maher was talking about how we need a recession to bring down Trump. He was talking about that on the air. And yeah, your country. It's craziness. It's craziness. Beyond words. I know, and and he wasn't the only one. He said it first, but a few others said it, and then it died off. And now we're seeing it. And coronavirus. I may be off by the numbers, but I think there's only one person in America that's gotten it in the United States because the the numbers they're including these people they brought back from Japan. You know, and, and I was, as I was telling my wife yesterday, there are more people on our street, and we live on a small street, there are more people on our street than have coronavirus in the United States. It's, it's, a, it's not a threat. It's not an issue. It's not a problem. And the media are scaring the hell out of people. People around this country are loading up on supplies, both food and medical supplies. They're act, they're, the, the way that the many people in this country are acting as if we do in Florida when there's a hurricane coming. And it's there. There's a panic going on, uh, coast to coast. And on top of that, they're trying to cause a financial panic as well. And it's all part of trying to bring down Trump. <clears throat> yeah. Now, listen. I don't know too much about Maine, and I, I was watching on. I was reading a story today. They showed an election map: Trump versus Bernie. They give Maine to Bernie Sanders in the election predictions. Maine is in the two districts. The southern district, and only about a third <clears throat> of the entire state land-wise is District 1. And that's where most of the people are, and they get two electoral electoral, electoral yeah. um, vote. Okay. District 2, which is two-thirds of the land size, but only way less population, is where it's about Farmington, Maine North, voted for Trump last time, and it's going to... He's going to get another one from Maine. District two will vote for Trump. It's a it's a really weird split in the state. Yeah, but you know, I'll tell you, there's a big difference between voting Democrat and voting for Bernie Sanders. And I was watching, and by the way, the same map, the same map gave Michigan to Bernie Sanders, so it wasn't it was not in my mind credible. But I don't see a lot of Democrats rushing out to vote for a communist. I I I, I could be wrong. But I, I, I think the Democrat vote will be so depressed in the next presidential election if he's the nominee. This, but District 1 is real liberal, and they love Bernie Sanders, and he will get the Southern di the District 1 to the electoral. Now, Maine, to, uh, maybe I'm wrong, but Maine seems to me to be an older population, not these stupid kids like uh, around El Paso. Why, why, why do you think someone who's a grown-up, you know, would, would would vote for Bernie Sanders? What do they see in him? Well, from my 
for my for what my parents taught me, Maine used to be Republican, and then it gradually went the other way. But Southern Maine, um, like Connecticut, New York, um, a lot of places down there, people come up here to vacation <coughs> in the summer because we have perfect summers. And the older population heads to Florida to retire, but they come home for the summer. Yeah. I think they, <clears throat> and they, they call them snowbirds. Yes. Stay at least seven months in Maine to stay in Maine to vote. Yeah. Well. How the older crowd made that jump. Well, this is, you know, I'm not. You know, I'll tell you, I, I think a lot of a, a lot of Democrats, I'm not talking about today, but in years past, I think a lot of Democrats voted Democrat and not Republican and were opposed to Republican because the the Christian right had such an influence in the Republican Party, you know, with the Pat Robertson Family Research Council. And I think a lot of Democrats voted Democrat because they hate Christians. And they viewed the Republican Party as, as really almost like a church, you know, like the Handmaid's Tale. That's, that's how they think we are. And, and there's been such a transition away from that, especially with Donald Trump. And one of the reasons the Democrats are losing, there's many reasons the Democrats are losing support. But one of them, and I'm, I'm Christian, I'm a, I'm a Catholic, and I've been a Christian my whole life. So I'm not saying that being Christian is, is a negative but I think the Christian identity of the Republican Party cost us a lot of voters, and that and that identity has been lost. I, I don't think the Republicans are seen. Like, I gave an example. We got this openly gay guy, the head of national intelligence. I haven't heard. Where's the Family Research Council and 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 uh, those those old Republican anti-gay voices that we would normally hear screaming at the top of their lungs that there's an openly gay man in such a, a prestigious position, the highest openly gay person in federal office ever in the history of the country. You're not hearing any of that. And and that that's one of the reasons I think we're gaining a lot of people in, in the Republican Party is getting getting away from the the anti gay Christian identification. <clears throat> and, and that's important too, because even though as a Christian I believe it, I'm against that lifestyle, they have their belief but their belief cannot supersede or do away with mine, and theirs can't stop my beliefs. Yeah, and I, and, yeah, and I, and I'll tell you the thing. I correct coex. You know, the one thing I feel though, and I've talked about this a lot, is uh, Christians are. You know, they always talk about the sanctity of marriage. They, you know, and and I've thought that a lot of Christians and Christian conservatives take that anti-gay position because it's a it's kind of a safe prejudice if they were concerned about the sanctity of marriage instead of preaching against homosexuality they would preach against the uh divorce and remarriage but if they did that they would empty out the pews people don't want to hear that they, you know there's this thing evangelicals talk about well divorce is okay if you're unevenly yoked and it just is so coincidental these 45 year old men are equally they're unequally yoked to the mother of their children but the 25-year-old with the big boobs looks good in a bikini. They somehow are equally yoked to all of these women. You know, you know what I mean? It's, it's interesting how that plays out. And if, if they were really concerned about the sanctity of marriage, they would talk about being a, so opposed to divorce and remarriage. But they don't. And I, and I find that such a hypocritical issue among so many Christian conservatives. But anyway, I think I, when I saw this new elect, you heard Nancy Pelosi say yesterday she'd back Bernie. And I was shocked. Yeah, she said she's opposed to socialism. She said she would. She, yeah, she's opposed to socialism, but she'd back him, and she wouldn't have a. She said she wouldn't have a problem with him being the nominee. Because she hopes to get on his ticket. Nah, I don't think she wants to be on that ticket because that's a losing ticket. How long until um, Biden and Warren drop out? They're not even close to the second place, are they? Oh no! This by this time next week, the field is going to be thinned quite a bit because South Carolina is big, and then you know because that's um that's Saturday, and then how many states are up on Tuesday? A lot, you know. So, yeah, and and those states are so. 
we're gonna there's gonna be a lot of thinning of the herd at the beginning of March because what happened I, I think Bernie Sanders is the favorite in South Carolina. Okay, I really do believe that. Um, certainly to come in second. If he come if he doesn't come in first, the fix is in. But I, I think he's gonna perform very well and and that influences Tuesday. So by Wednesday or Thursday, there's gonna be some people that are just not you know, uh Tom Steyer and Bloomberg can stay in because they have these ridiculous rules about fundraising and they have unlimited wealth to donate to their campaigns so they can keep buying their way into debates. But there's going to be a big thinning of the herd over the next the next week. All right, Jeff in Maine. Brian, who do you think will join if Bernie becomes the front runner and throw in their support to him? I don't think there's going to be many. Um, I would say Elizabeth Warren is a, she's an open Democrat socialist, isn't she? I mean, you know. I don't see Biden supporters supporting Bernie Sanders. I think their ticket's very divided. If, and that's why the Dem uh, National Committees or the, uh, you know, the people that decide, the superdelegates aren't going to give them. Yeah. Well, I'll tell you that I would say... It's hard. I can't even. The two next to drop out, I would say, would be Klobuchar and Buttigieg. Buttigieg has had the worst week that he's ever had. He, um, there's, he's been shown to be plagiarizing the Obama speeches, <clears throat> and there's a lot of videos circulating online of split screen. I played one the other day, but there's more a split screen of Obama and Buttigieg, and Buttigieg is saying the exact same thing word for word Obama was saying in his stump speeches. And also, Buttigieg went to that um, $15 uh, minimum wage demonstration in South Carolina, and the blacks that were running that uh, demonstration to raise the minimum wage chased Buttigieg off. He, he went to, did you see this video? Oh, Buttigieg, he went to this event to speak. He showed up unannounced. And he started speaking, and they started uh, chanting, you can't be our president, and they ran him off. He ran away and jumped in his SUV and sped off. And that was in South Carolina a couple days ago. So B Buttigieg is almost out. I'm going to try to find a woman to run because I think he, they need the woman's vote. I, I, I see something. I don't, I'm not saying Hillary either because she, she hates Sanders. Yeah. But... He's gonna. They gonna do. They're gonna try something. Oh yeah. All right, Jeff. I gotta. I gotta run. But thanks. Thanks for the call. It's twenty minutes after the hour. I'm Brian. You are listening to Florida's longest running radio show, the Steve Kane Show, on the radio since 1977. That's right. We're gonna take our break. When we get back, there's more to talk about. Don't go anywhere. Point three FM, ninety six point nine FM, one hundred three point nine FM, and AM fourteen seventy. WWNN Papado Beach is the Florida Money Talk Network. Folks, I'm sitting here today with Attorney Barry Siegel of the Siegel Law Group, the man who drafted my personal revocable living trust. Barry, welcome to the show, and tell us why it is so important when you have a trust to get it reviewed periodically. Well, Steve. Trust should be reviewed, I would suggest, every three years. First of all, the, the, one of the key reasons is because the documents you have at the time you need it are the ones that count, not the old ones you did a long time ago. So you need to check to make sure that the people that you've named for important fiduciary roles are still around and are still good choices. Make sure that you haven't had any new additions to the family, like grandchildren. Make sure that there haven't been any divorces or remarriages. And then we also need to look and see if uh, anything changed in your financial life. And, of course, the laws change. So it's very important to make sure that your estate planning documents are up to date under the law. And uh, you will do this review at no charge. Is that correct? That's correct. If you don't, what a deal. And only $350 if you're single, $450 if you're married. Folks, you owe it to yourself to make that appointment with Barry. Uh, you can call Barry at uh, toll-free 1-855-FLA-3782 or go to stevecaneshow.com on the sponsor page. Tell them we sent you by. If you suffer with diabetes, there's a 25% chance that you'll develop a foot ulcer that can lead to severe health consequences, including amputation. At the sole authority, at little or no cost, you can receive your very own therapeutic shoes 
and custom inserts. Medicare recipients are entitled to one pair of quality diabetic shoes and three custom inserts. Call the Soul Authority today, 954-597-7060. Does your life insurance policy only pay someone if you die? The new life insurance policies allow you to access your benefits even while you are still alive. Due to changes in the insurance industry, all life insurance carriers in 2020 have adjusted their premiums to your advantage. Life insurance rates have been lowered due to the updated mortality tables. People are living longer in America, and that means life insurance premiums are lower. Call Debbie and Dan at I Will Advisors, 954-753-8080 to learn more and for a free review of your existing life insurance policy. 954-753-8080. 954-753-8080. Listen to the Steve King Show on iHeartRadio. All righty. <clears throat> We're back. I'm Brian Craig. You're listening to the Steve Kane Radio Show, Florida's longest running radio show. I was surprised. I was just on Twitter, and the number one trend for me was Ann Coulter today. Ann Coulter. And uh, Ann Coulter said some positive things about Elizabeth Warren. So she, you know, I used to be, a, I was a huge fan of Ann Coulter for a long time. And she's another one, you know, Ann Coulter really got shut out. You don't see her on TV anymore. You know, a couple things happened with Ann Coulter. <clears throat> but what really, uh, I had heard from some credible people that she got shut out from Fox News by Bill O'Reilly. For whatever reason. Um, and that was a part of it back in those days. But after O'Reilly's departure, you didn't, you know, Ann Coulter's used to be on TV all the time. And a couple things happened with Ann Coulter. <clears throat> she was often on the liberal news shows and networks, and they started um, not using her because she was so effective. And she was doing so well. She'd go on The View, she'd clean their clock. She'd go on CNN, she'd clean their clock. She was so effective. And they stopped using her. And um, I, I, I'm i assuming, I could be wrong about this, but I assume that Ann Coulter uh, makes most of her money on speaking engagements and book sales. And when she stopped being on television so often, she stopped selling as many books because she's not on TV to promote them all the time, Right. And I imagine not being on TV as often also stops you from getting invited on the speaking circuit as well. And then during the, tr she became like a never Trumper. And um, still is on occasion every time you hear about Ann Coulter. So I, I used to hang on Ann Coulter's every word. We've had her on the show multiple times. A big fan, always a big fan of Ann Coulter. But um, I. I have no use for never Trumpers. I'm not interested in hearing from never Trumpers and I never trust a never Trumper. The only never Trumper that has regained the confidence of people is Mark Levin, Glenn Beck, Ann Coulter, Ben Shapiro, all these never Trumpers. I, I don't listen to them too much and uh, they really, I don't trust them. Never trust a never Trumper. Mark Levin, on the other hand, you know, I, I was a huge fan of Mark Levin for many, many years, and I listened to his show a lot. <clears throat> and then he started that Never Trumper crap, and I was out. And like a lot of Never Trumpers, he came around, and, and you know, I just don't, um, I don't trust them. And then President Trump started talking about Mark Levin, and then he became a very strong Trump person. So I trust Mark Levin because he's got, and I know President Trump listens to Mark Levin at night because I've heard him uh, say, I heard President Trump say, meet the depressed, which is a Mark Levin thing. And there was another thing I heard Trump say that is something, I can't remember what it was that, that Mark Levin says all the time. So I know he listens to Mark Levin. So Mark Levin likes that. He's so he's, I, we can trust Mark Levin now, but out of the other never Trumpers, Shapiro and Coulter, Beck, I don't trust any of them at all. At all. Um, however, I am going to tune in. Um, I'll do it today. Steve and I have a meeting somewhere today after the show, so I and got a bit of a drive. And I'm going to listen to Glenn Beck today. And I'm going to try to tune in to Glenn Beck next week. 
And I want to hear Glenn Beck. It, it's not, it's been a long time since I wanted to hear Glenn Beck, but I make it a a note to myself to tune Glenn Beck in today. He comes on after we're off the air, and uh, the the reason um, I'm going to listen to Glenn Beck is I want to hear what he does with coronavirus. And uh, the reason I want to hear what his attitude is on coronavirus is because he's he's Mormon. And I want to see if Glenn Beck is talking about coronavirus realistically. It's no threat. More people on your street have it, are on your street that have coronavirus. Right? That's right. Right? In, in, in America. Or does he make a big deal about it, Glenn Beck? Because Glenn Beck, when he was on top of the world was promoting survival food and the survival seeds. Remember the survival seeds, the Jack and the Beanstalk seeds? Uh, it was like five seeds you could hold in your hand that could grow a whole field of, of crops and the survival food. And there were others that promoted survival food, but not like Glenn Beck. Art Bell used to do it. <clears throat> the late, great Art Bell used to do the survival food. But he was talking about the MREs, the military food that is awful. He was talking. And what Glenn Beck was doing, I, I Mormons stock up on supplies for, I don't know, what are they waiting for? Is it the rapture? I don't know. There's a, there's a whole Mormon industry of stocking up on supplies for when something happens. I'm not sure exactly what Mormons are waiting for. If anyone knows, let me know. The end days. And if you remember, Glenn Beck was always talking about the, the collapse and he needed the seeds and the survival food and all this stuff. And that's a big Mormon industry, the stocking up on the food for the coming of, if anyone knows, call me, what are the Mormons stocking up for? What are they waiting for? And they stock up on food. They have generators and gasoline, basically like we stock up when a hurricane's coming. And it's a huge industry inside the Mormon church, Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. And I, I would bet you that Mitt Romney probably has in each one of his homes, this huge stockpile of stuff. And when Glenn Beck was the uh, it girl of talk radio for a couple of years, he was heavily promoting that stuff. And and I, I used to talk about this at the time. A lot of the rise of Glenn Beck had to do with the Mormon support. Mormons have big money, and he was promoting these Mormon industries. And the reason I want to listen to him today talk about the coronavirus, <clears throat> it'll be a test of credibility uh, for Glenn Beck, who I no longer trust because he is a never-Trumper. And I don't think he's ever really reconsidered his never. I think he, you know, tr being a never Trumper destroyed Glenn Beck. Just destroyed. And it was sad. He was big. He was. I was never a huge fan. But I, you know, we go. Well, anyway, if he's hyping the coronavirus as a serious thing, I'll see if he ties in the that Mormon food supply stuff with it. You know, Rush Limbaugh was the first person this week to start talking about it. This is. Coronavirus is fake news. It's being pushed by the media and pushed by the left to try to hurt Trump. And there's been a lot of writing this week. BuzzFeed had a big article, and I've seen articles elsewhere this week. <clears throat> Liberals are, uh, they're very frustrated because it used to be the media could get us concerned and worried about this and that and manipulate the American people. They still do on occasion, but they don't have the power they once did. And there's been a lot of talk among the liberals this week of how... Trump supporters are not concerned with coronavirus because we don't trust the media. And that's right. We don't trust the media. And what, the, what they're talking about is the danger of the f fake news narrative that President Trump and his supporters have promoted the idea of fake news, that there's no tr trust in the media and the media are telling us about this coronavirus crisis and they don't want to accept the truth of the coronavirus crisis because they don't trust the media. I don't trust the media. I don't believe the media. I think most of you that support Trump don't trust nor believe the media. Everything is about hype. They're pushing down the stock market to try to hurt Trump on the economy. They're pushing uh, this non-threat of the coronavirus to have a health scare, uh, to try to panic the American people against Trump. You know, so no, we don't trust the media. We don't believe them. And the attitude that the country has in regards to the coronavirus will be another test of the power of the media. You know, during the 2016 election, the entire mainstream media predicted that Trump would lose, right? That's right. 
And we were also talking about how um, uh, the internet, though, was showing that Trump was winning in various ways. And the 2016 election was a test of what is the media? Is it, and what media has power? Is it the mainstream media, which is mostly television, cable news? Or is it the new media of the internet? And I think 2016 proved that television has no juice. It's, it's the internet now, so far as the mainstream media, that the cable news no longer has the influence it once did. Now, if that's what you watch all day, it has a lot of influence over you. Um, one of my wife's friends is in a total panic over coronavirus beyond anything I could ever imagine. And she's trying to get everyone she knows panicked on it. Okay, and and she gets her information from cable news, but Trump people are not in a panic over coronavirus for two reasons. One, we don't trust the media and we don't get our news and information from the mainstream media. And I think you would be hard pressed to find any Trump people that are in any in any way, shape or form concerned about coronavirus. It's total fake news. And I think most Trump people also are not concerned about the economy even though the, the stock market's taking these huge, huge, huge dives because we believe that anti-Trump forces are driving the markets down to try to hurt his reelection. I've been saying for weeks that you, the economy is doing so well, you're not hearing any of the pundits talking about people voting their pocketbook. Remember, I've talked about this many times. If the stock market continues to go down, it's only a matter of hours before the first political pundit says, well, you know, people vote their pocketbook and, you know, here we are in an election year, even though we haven't heard it at all during good economic times. So, uh, yeah, I, I think most of us believe the coronavirus and what's going on in the stock market today is fake news being pushed by never Trumpers and Trump haters to try to cost him reelection. All right. It's uh, 35 minutes after seven o'clock in the morning. I'm Brian Craig. You are listening to Florida's longest-running radio show, The Steve Kane Show, on the radio since 1977. We'll take our break and be right back. Don't go anywhere. This is Steve Kane. I'm here chatting with Dr. Troy Lemaski, my personal chiropractor. Show. Dr. Troy, hey. how are you today? Doing well, Steve. Chiropractic is an art. All the nerves in your body go through your spine. If your spine's out of line, the nerves get pinched. And, of course, you're going to have all kinds of symptoms and all kinds of pain as a result of that. And until you get that spine realigned, you're going to be in pain. 100% correct. If you have a joint, especially in your back, that's stuck, that's not moving properly, it will put pressure not only possibly on nerves, but more of the time on tissue structures such as the ligaments, the muscles, and it will create pressure. There are nerves within the joint will mechanoreceptors, and it will affect the actual nerves that are in the joint. Pinch nerves are very common, and they do come from spinal misalignments, but not everybody that has a problem has a pinch nerve. I've been seeing you for a relatively short period of time, and you have the healing touch, I'll tell you that. When I walk out of your office, it's uh, I feel like a whole new person. I know you take great care of everybody, but I know you're going to go that extra mile for our wonderful Steve Kane listeners. Doctor, give them the number of the office where they can make an appointment. It's Coast Chiropractic Injury and Wellness Center, and the phone number is 954-463-3036. 954-463-3036. We're located in East Fort Lauderdale. We're just one block of US-1 and Oakland Park Boulevard right off Middle River Drive. The address is 2510 East Oakland Park Boulevard, Fort Lauderdale. Dr. Troy Lamaski, a great healer. Make an appointment today. Feeling old, tired, run down, struggling with your sex life or weight control? Dr. Matez can fix it. Call the Boca Raton Center for Age Management at 561-953-5490 or visit their website at brc4am.com. The Steve Kane Show is brought to you by Attorney Barry Siegel at the Siegel Law Group. Avoid the revocable living trust. $350 for single people, $450 for married couples. When you complete your trust with Attorney Barry Siegel, he will give you a $100 gift certificate to Tavolino Italian Restaurant in Coral Springs. Call the Siegel Law Group with nine offices in South Florida, including downtown Fort Lauderdale, Coral Gables, and downtown Miami. one 855 FLA 3782. Listen to the Steve Kane Show on iHeartRadio. All right, we are back. I'm Brian Craig. This is the Steve Kane Show. Friendly Tire, open on Saturdays. Okay, I know a lot of you may not be able to make it in 
during the week for whatever reason, but uh, Friendly Tire and Margate is open on Saturday. You can call Friendly Mike. He'll give you a quote right over the phone, 954-977-9445. They have thousands of very good used tires in stock, starting at just $30 for most cars. They do repairs, uh, starting at just 7 bucks a repair. Tire shops around town don't do repairs. Friendly Tire does repairs, starting at 7 bucks. Their new uh, tire prices are out of this world, and they have all the brands that you love, Firestone, Goodyear, Michelin. They have all those tire brands that you know and love, and of course, these uh, great deals that you hear me talk about all the time on the tires that I've gotten for my family and that Steve has gotten. Uh, you know, Steve's van, uh, the tires on his van, the lowest price we could find around town, $175 a tire. $175 a tire. Friendly Tires price, 75 bucks for brand new tires. That's out the door and on the road because Friendly Tire does not charge you to mount the tire, doesn't charge you to balance the tire. There's no added fees. So not $175, the lowest price we could find around town, $75 a tire for brand new tires out the door on the road. That's a $100 savings per tire. Is that amazing? The savings greater than the cost of the tire. That's amazing. I know. Uh, give Friendly Mike a call. He will give you a quote over the phone, 954-977-9445. 954-977-9445. Online, FriendlyTire.net. Friendly Tire located in Margate at 5415 Northwest 15th Street. 15th Street is just north of Coconut Creek Parkway on the east side of 441 State Road 7. And if you go to stevecaneshow.com, I've got the address of Friendly Tire there. If you want to plug it into your navigation system. Friendly Tires, save some money, all right? Okay, let's go to the phones. Richie, the bus driver, hey. Yeah, good morning. I want to get this out of the way. I, I, I believe right now you're, you're too cavalier about the subject. Which one? With the, with the virus. Oh, coronavirus, okay. Let's say this to you. I think the President of the United States... Okay, I got a question for you. Over the course of the next month, will more people in America die from coronavirus or drunk driving from drinking uh, corona beer? Over the next month? Mm -hmm. In America. I don't know. Yeah, well, there you go. Really know. And that's, let me just say this to you. It, the, the stock market and, and the world economy, I'm going to show you the hypocritical Democrats and the talking points that they have in the press, by the way. China didn't level with us, and China is infested, okay? They have a major problem. We still can't get the truth out of China. You got, you got, a, lot of, you got a lot of sick people there. I realize their sanitation is not like ours. The hospital. Well, I heard, a, I heard a story that they were doing some animal testing, and then they think maybe a worker sold the animals to a restaurant. I, I heard that yesterday. I don't know if that's true, but I'm you hear kind of crazy things out of China. Yeah, but, but the thing is this. The problem with this virus is that it has that incubation period. So you could have it right now sitting there feeling 100% normal and not realize it. And you might have been given it by somebody that oh my goodness. blow to you in the street. Yeah. What I'm trying to say is this. No, no time for panic because we don't have... But I'm sure your attitude would change if, if 10 people in Boca were told all of a sudden came down with it this morning and then 30 tomorrow in Boca. Oh, if yeah, if there was an epidemic... Yeah, I'd start to worry. If there was an epidemic, I would start to worry, but there's not. There's what is it? How many people have gotten it in the United States, not including the people they brought back from Japan? How many people? One? Is it one? That one from California? No, there's more than that, I think. How much how much cable how much cable news do you generally watch in a day? I watch Fox quite a bit. How many hours a day? How many hours? Uh, I would say Four or five. Four or five, probably more. So you don't think that Fox News obsessing over coronavirus has influenced your concern? The one one person I, I, I think has gotten it in America, not including the people brought back. Come on, Richie. We, the, news is, the news is being irresponsible. The news is being irresponsible and putting you in a panic. You're not, well, they're on the Democratic side, and they want to put us in a panic because they are against President Trump. And the fact is, uh, uh, during the debate la uh, last week, they were talking about how Trump pulled out of the Paris Accords. He doesn't get in. He's, he don't believe in the globalism, and we need to work with our partners and, and in China and all. Are you really, uh, Odin? Are you? Do you and let's talk about this. 
is, now, hold on a second here. I'm going to go back to something. I, back, there, I had an incident with a caller that happened many years ago. Remember when the, the, uh, that jerk was suing New Dow to take God out of the Pledge of Allegiance? Remember that? That was like 15 years ago, right? It's a long time ago. And his daughter that didn't live with him, his daughter that didn't live with him. And a, a woman called me on the air, and she's told me that she was offended at having to say God in the Pledge of Allegiance. And she was an older woman, you know. And she was very honest with me. And I asked her on the air, I said, well, wait a minute. I said, were you offended at having to say it when you actually were saying it, which is in the time when you were in school or a baseball game? Or with all this news with New Dow, did you all of a sudden realize you were offended? And she gave me a very honest answer. She says, you know what? I, I didn't realize I was offended until this story became a news story. Okay? And there's a similar thing going on with you and many others with the irresponsible media over coronavirus. Coronavirus is fake news. There's no, there's a coronavirus... But it's not an epidemic in America. It's not a big... Not at all. But, 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 but I, I am you trying to say that that's me. It's not... I'm not saying that. But I know that the Democrats are saying that Trump didn't get on top of it, which is fake, phony, and baloney, because they, they had the Senate tied up with this impeachment. The Senate didn't work for all that time. So, and that's the fault of the Democrats. And they have no solutions at all. And they want open borders. And everything that they want, they would infest this place. So the bottom line is they're baloney. That's what I, I Okay. So so why so okay. So Corona is there's not there's nothing to worry about in America. You know, in China, in China, in China, there's a lot of things. Some of them that got infected may have eaten infected animals sold from the lab. I did hear that story. Um, they also don't have the inoculations we have in America. They don't have the immune systems we have. They're not. They don't have the sanitation we have, and 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 also they've got weakened lungs because of the poor air quality in in China. So it's 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 nonsense. Orient. Steve Kane show. Do, do you know what they? Do you know what one of the delicacies in the Orient? I, I, someone told me baby rats. I heard someone say recently. Hey, this is the truth. They deep fat fry like you do French fries. Fats. Yes. I. Yes. Yeah. It's crazy. Before they do it, they cut their throats, and the blood goes into a glass. Yeah, I've heard that. Drink it like wine. Yeah, I've heard that. Yeah, I know. I've heard that. I, yeah, yeah, yeah. So you you can't compare everything that's that, what's going on there to here. In, in the United States right now is used for one purpose, one purpose only to attack the president. Okay. So what? So what are you worried about then? Because you were saying, well, if thirty or fifty people. Here in South Florida, got to give you... Here you would change your mind. If it had, yeah, exactly. Stock market to supply lines from China because we haven't been independent and we sent... We don't even... You know where the, you know where the surgical masks are made? China. Yes. Even get the surgical masks because we sent all our industries because of all these creeps in Washington <laughs> that have made fortunes in investments in Washington, including this ex-mayor of New York... Who's loaded because of China? Well, you know, I'll tell you about the surgical masks. My wife, you know, we keep surgical masks because when somebody in the family has a cold, my wife has a heart and lung illness. So when she gets a cold, it's life threatening. So um, when one of us in the family get a cold, my wife wears masks and we don't use those. Those surgical masks that you see people wearing do no good. My wife gets the real thing that protects you from viruses. And they're, they are expensive. And she went and ordered a, uh, a box. Of, when the coronavirus scare first started a week or so ago, she says, well, I better order a box because they're going to be hard to get. They're sold out now. You cannot buy on Amazon. You cannot buy. And I'm not talking, you know, the, the surgical mask that you see people buy, like at Walgreens and stuff, those don't protect you from viruses of any. Those don't protect you from cold and flu. You, you know, you got It's a different type of mask. And they are they're they're they cost it cost ninety dollars a box for these masks. But my, if I have a cold and my daughter has a cold and my wife gets it, she could be in the hospital. So you know, but but they're sold out of the masks now. China, even Apple phones. Yeah. Put everything to China, and these stupid people in Washington want us to keep, go right back to it. 
I want people to think out there before I hang up. Everything that this country's been going through for the last three and a half years, the good, the, the economy, the people getting jobs, the first black president is so true because... Well, are you are you worried about the stock? I mean, I, President Trump is a leading economist with an economics degree and a huge history of success in the world of, of uh, everything economic. Don't you think President Trump knows what's going on and knows how to get uh, the stock market back on track? I do. I have no concerns. Uh, well, it'll come back. It'll come of course. This is a course. It'll come back because we're doing very well. And Trump always wins. All right, Richie, I got to run. Thanks for the call. 48 minutes after the hour, we'll take our last break of the second hour. You're listening to The Steve Kane Show, Florida's longest-running radio show on the radio since 1977. Don't go anywhere. Homeowners, this is Scott from Cut by Kilowatts. I'm here to cut your electric bill and save you a lot of money, perhaps even eliminate your electric bill altogether. We do this by making your entire home energy efficient, by upgrading some or all of the following. Roofs, doors, windows, insulating your attic, AC systems, and ducts, hot water heaters, and even adding solar. Energy efficient improvements that actually pay for themselves over a short period of time. Our program is designed to make the savings on your electric bill pay for all or part of your low monthly payments. The PACE program is government sponsored and gives you up to 30 years to pay. It requires no credit check, no money down, no income verification, and no payments for up to 18 months. You only need to be current on your mortgage and taxes for the last three years to qualify. Energy savings and hurricane solutions made easy. Call 954-939-1500. 954-939-1500 to start saving money now. Hi, this is Dr. Mitchell Matez, and I'm here to talk to you about telomeres. Telomeres are widely accepted in all scientific circles as being the marker of biological aging. The shorter your telomeres, the older you are. The telomeres shorten as we age, and the shortened, damaged telomeres lead to tissue degeneration, disease, and ultimately death. What can you do? You can take a telomere activator, a pill that activates the enzyme in your body that repairs and lengthens telomeres. There is only one of available in the world that contains the exact bioidentical DNA sequence that the body uses to accomplish this naturally, and it is called TA65. At the Boca Raton Center for Age Management, we offer the absolutely lowest price on TA65 available anywhere in the world, and I mean anywhere, folks. If you want to lengthen your telomeres, call the Boca Raton Center for Age Management at 561-953-5490. That's 561-953-5490. Or visit our website, hormonetherapybocaraton.com. Does your life insurance policy only pay someone if you die? The new life insurance policies allow you to access your benefits even while you are still alive. Due to changes in the insurance industry, all life insurance carriers in 2020 have adjusted their premiums to your advantage. Life insurance rates have been lowered due to the updated mortality tables. People are living longer in America, and that means life insurance premiums are lower. Call Debbie and Dan at I Will Advisors, 954-753-8080 to learn more and for a free review of your existing life insurance policy. 954-753-8080. 954-753-8080. Listen to the Steve King Show on iHeartRadio. Yes, yes. <clears throat> All right, welcome back, everyone. My name is Brian Craig. You are listening to the Steve King Show, Florida's longest-running radio show on the radio since 1977. So tomorrow is South Carolina, and I, I think that Bernie's the favorite to win all of them. He, no, no one wins every primary, okay? But I think he's the favorite. I think he's the favorite in South Carolina. Um, there's been a lot of interviewing going on in the last week of black voters in South Carolina, and they don't like any of these white guys running. And Bernie is the most liked of all. He's got the biggest operation going on. And I think he's favorite to win South Carolina. The, and they're already talking, if you watch CNN, about Nancy Pelosi accepting the nomination of, of Bernie Sanders, and she says yes. They're making a move to steal it, and there, um, there was a guy. One of there was a guy on MSNBC yesterday. He was a former uh, advisor to President Obama, and let me let me play this clip. Where is this clip? Hold on. Where is this? Here we go. This was MSNBC yesterday. I, I, I will say that Bernie is moving to go post. This is what people need to remember. 
Uh, the Democratic Party has a party. The party decides its nominee. The public doesn't really decide the nominee. The public gets to vote for President of the United States, but people who are active in the party, who participate in the party, they decide the nominee. Superdelegates are very influential in the party. Also, delegates are very influential. And just because you're a pledged delegate for Bernie Sanders or a pledged delegate for Joe Biden doesn't mean when you get to the convention floor that you'll stay a delegate for Biden or Sanders. That's a process. And so it is a process to, to pick the candidate who wants to be the standard bearer for the party to try to win in November. And so <clears throat> Bernie got to understand that process. And it's, it's a real selective and detailed process. In 2008, the Obama campaign from the very beginning yeah. focused on the delegate process because we knew it all was going to come down to the delegates, who's committed to you, who wants to be on your team at the end, and do you really feel like they can be elected? Okay, so, yeah, this guy, he was an advisor to President Obama. He talked about how the scam they ran to steal the nomination from Hillary. The uh, Democrat Party doesn't like democracy. Democracy doesn't decide our nominee. The superdelegates do. So there's a big misinformation campaign going on and a lot of foreshadowing going on by the Democrats. And I'll tell you what it is. They plan on stealing the nomination from Bernie. You are going to see, especially if Bernie performs well in South Carolina and then come Tuesday, you're going to see a lot of this on MSNBC and CNN. You're going to see a lot of Democrats that work for Obama and others telling you, well, yeah, you know, he's he's performing very well. But the way that, that it works is the delegates and the superdelegates choose. Our party chooses. Voters don't choose... They're preparing, they're trying to prepare on MSNBC, and you'll see more of this, as, depending on how this weekend goes. If Bernie wins South Carolina, you'll see a lot more of it. If he starts to lose, they won't have to go this way. But you're going to see these Democrats on cable news start talking about the theft of the nomination from Bernie Sanders. Well, yeah, he does have the majority of the voters, but you have to understand these primary votes, these are just symbolic. It's really at the convention the superdelegates choose. They're trying to prepare their people for the theft so that when they steal it from Bernie Sanders, their people aren't like, how do you, can you do this? And they'll, they'll, they'll point out, no, we've been talking for weeks, that this is months, this is how, you know, and they'll be, oh, okay. Nancy Pelosi, though, is, in, is involved in this theft. And they asked her yesterday, do you, would you support Bernie Sanders? She said, yes. She says, I'm not a socialist. I don't support the socialist economic system, but I would accept his nomination. Pelosi is the leader of the Democrat Party, as Speaker of the House. She's the highest ranking official. And with this is this is plausible deniability. Nancy Pelosi is working behind the scenes to steal the nomination from Bernie Sanders. By the way, is Nancy a are members of Congress delegates? I with these Democrats, I I don't know. Does anyone know? Is she a delegate? If she is, she's a super one. I know Donna Brazil is a super delegate. Because she said so last time when they were trying to steal it from Bernie. So Nancy Pelosi is working behind the scenes to steal it from Bernie, but publicly she's because she doesn't want to alienate the voters. So she wants to act like she would, but you know, so there's a lot of misinformation going on. But I'll tell you this if Bernie Sanders won the nomination, he still couldn't beat Trump. I'm not concerned about him beating Trump, Trump would beat him. But if you have a communist become the nominee of one of the parties, like Bernie Sanders, you'll start to see the stock market take a hit. If, again, this is not going to happen. But in Bernie's world, if Bernie Sanders were to become the president on election night, if he were to win, he's the nominee, there'll be a financial hit. Then he, say he wins and Trump loses, we would probably have another great depression. They might have to shut down the stock market. Because if you have a guy who, you really got to think about this now. If you have a guy who is a communist, just win the nomination of one of the two parties, that means there's a chance. A slight chance. I think Trump would beat him, but there's a chance a communist could win. What's that? It, just by getting the nom what would that do to the financial markets? Would that cause a, I think it would cause a panic. Now, could you only imagine what would happen if Bernie won? And here's the danger. There's no danger of Bernie Sanders winning. No Democrat is going to beat Donald Trump, no matter what fake news they promote about the virus and the markets and all this stuff. The threat of a Bernie nomination is not Bernie Sanders winning this election. It's getting 
Democrat voters accustomed to the idea of having a Democratic Socialist as their nominee. And with him getting the nomination comes tremendous power. Tremendous power. The, the nominee of the party, even when they lose, become powerful and influential in that party. That's how John Kerry became Secretary of State. Okay? <clears throat> and he'll have tremendous influence over who their next nominee will be. And the Democrat voters will become accustomed to the idea of a Democratic Socialist. And there, if, if he wins the nomination, he's still going to lose, but down the road... We will. The, the Democrats are going to win the presidency again at some point. Okay, we're not going to go forever with Republican presidents. Democrats will win the presidency again in the future, hopefully very far in the future. But Bernie Sanders winning the nomination increases the likelihood of having a Democratic Socialist in the White House, and I believe it will happen. It's only a matter of time before there's a Democratic Socialist in the White House as President of the United States. Hopefully I'm gone then, okay? Very far in the future, but it's going to happen. It's going to happen. If Bernie Sanders wins the nomination, for sure, it's going to happen. And that's a, that's a big danger in this country. And, 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 you know, the way I would describe it is a Bernie Sanders nomination by the Democrat Party would be... A, a major victory in the American Communist Revolution. It would really be that, you know, a soft revolution. And a, and, a, and a Democratic Socialist becoming president, well, that would be, that would be like the Communist Revolution winning, right? I mean, the cold, I mean, what, really what you think, what you're talking about here is <clears throat> we're in a, uh, kind of like the Cold War, right? The domino theories, there's a domino about to fall in America, with 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 Bernie Sanders and it, you know Bernie Sanders is, gonna, is not going to be the president, but I'll tell you what. We laugh at her. AOC is being groomed to be uh, the president. There is a, I mentioned this about a month ago. Disney Plus. Everyone's talking about Disney Plus. There is a television show about a Hispanic president who is looking back on her childhood, and it's about AOC. The Disney, Disney Plus has a show about AOC becoming president, and it's a very popular sitcom among young people. If you watch this show, and, you know, there's a big, she's not old enough now, but she will be in a few years. There's a big move, and if it's not her, it'll be another Democratic Socialist. So that's what's that's what's in play here. All right, I looked at the clock. It's eight o'clock in the morning. Where's the show going? Where I mean, the show just boom, 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 boom. It flies by. Two hours down, one to go. My name is Brian Craig. You are listening to the Steve Kane Radio Show, Florida's longest running radio show on the radio since 1977. Our number toll free one triple eight go Kane one triple eight four six five twenty six thirty one. That's right. Third hour begins right now. 5.3 FM, 96.9 FM, 103.9 FM, and AM 1470. WWNN Pompano Beach is the Florida Money Talk Network. If you suffer with diabetes, there's a 25% chance that you'll develop a foot ulcer that can lead to severe health consequences, including amputation. At the sole authority, at little or no cost, you can receive your very own therapeutic shoes and custom inserts. Medicare recipients are entitled to one pair of quality diabetic shoes and three custom inserts. Call the sole authority today, 954-597-7060. You've heard the jingle and seen the commercials, and that's right. You will get the best night's sleep you've ever had with a my pillow. Have you not gotten your my pillow yet? Right now is the best time to do it. That's right, Brian. Hey guys, this is Brian's wife, Kathy, and this is the best time to get a my pillow. They have amazing deals. Take advantage of them now. Go to mypillow.com, click the radio listener link, and you will see all these great deals. Like the buy one my pillow, get one for free. There's a bogo offer right now on the Giza Dream Sheet.
sheets. Buy one set of MyPillow Giza Dream Sheets and get the second set free. You gotta love BOGO deals. They're the best. And you can take advantage of so many right now at MyPillow.com. There's a lot of other deals, too. Again, go to MyPillow.com, click on that radio listener link, and you've got to use the promo code KANE, K-A-N-E, at checkout to get these incredible deals. So go right now to MyPillow.com, click the radio listener special, make sure to use that promo code KANE, K-A-N-E, at checkout to take advantage of all of the great deals. You can also order by phone, 1-800-716-4879. Make sure to use the promo code KANE, K-A-N-E, 1-800-716-4879. For the best night's sleep in the whole wide world, visit mypillow.com. Denture wearers, are messy adhesives ruining the taste of your food? Is it painful for you to eat? Does the constant denture movement affect your speech? Are you always worried that your dentures will fall out while you're talking or laughing? Do you have sore spots? You are not alone. These are common problems that can be solved simply with dental implants. This is Steve Kane, and I want to introduce you to Brighton Dental Care, where the Kane family goes for all our dental needs. Brighton Dental Care doesn't want cost to stop you from being able to eat the foods you love again and live in comfort. That's why, for Steve Kane listeners, they're offering implants, get this, for just $3,500. That includes two implants plus a lower denture. Now, if you go to a dentist in Boca or in Aventura, they're going to charge you $6,000 for the exact same implants and denture. That's right, $6,000, but at Brighton Dental Care, just $3,500. $500, and that includes the two implants plus your lower denture. Laugh and live with confidence. Call Brighton Dental Care at 954-922-4633, 954-922-4633, and online at brightondentalcare.com. Be sure to ask about special discounts for our military veterans. The Steve Kane Show is brought to you by Attorney Barry Siegel at the Siegel Law Group. Avoid probate with a revocable bill of trust. $350 for single people, $450 for married couples. When you complete your trust with Attorney Barry Siegel, he will give you a $100 gift certificate to Tamolino Italian Restaurant in Coral Springs. Call the Siegel Law Group with nine offices in South Florida, including downtown Fort Lauderdale, Coral Gables, and downtown Miami. 1-855- FLA 3782. Listen to the Steve Kane Show <clears throat> iHeartRadio. Yes, yes. All right. Third and final hour has begun. I'm Brian Craig. This is the Steve Kane Radio Show, Florida's longest running radio show. And, you know, Dr. Gupta over at Brighton Dental, don't forget, for Steve Kane listeners only, free exam and free x rays. What an incredible deal. Free exam and free x rays with Dr. Gupta at Brighton Dental. And also, he offers free second opinions. If you've been to your dentist or another dentist and they've told you you need this done or that done, large or small, uh, you can get a free second opinion over at Brighton Dental with Dr. Gupta. You know, a lot of dentists do things that they, sh you know, you know what I'm talking about. And uh, maybe you need to have that work done, but you know what? Maybe you don't. And it won't cost you anything to find out for sure. And uh, Dr. Gupta has been a listener of the Steve Kane show since back in the 80s. So you'll find a common bond with him. So free exam and free x-rays and free second opinion on top of the great low prices at Dr. Gupta's Brighton Dental. Give him a call, 954-922-4633. 954-922-4633. And of course, Dr. Gupta listed at stevekaneshow.com with all of our sponsors. Okay, so uh, coronavirus, fake news. You know, who, uh, I, I heard President Trump was pissed off that they flew back these Americans who were exposed and a, and a bunch of them have gotten sick. Do we know who okayed that? Who okayed bringing those uh, people that were exposed back into the country? You know, Pete uh, Hegseth on Fox News. I like Pete Hegseth. He's... He's all right. I watch him on the weekends. He's pretty. You guys like you know Pete Hegseth. Hegseth. He's pretty good, pretty good. In fact, uh, one of I, I've got a T-shirt that I got because I saw Pete Hegseth wearing it on Fox. I have a shirt. It's a map of the world, and it says "Landed on the Moon," and it just shows America, you know, and the rest is not colored in. Yeah, I saw Pete Hegseth wearing that shirt on TV. Found it online and got one for myself. I like him a lot. And uh, Pete uh, Hegseth, he's saying the Democrats and the media are rooting for the spread of the coronavirus to bring down President Trump. Is that even a debatable issue? That's different than talking about is it a threat. What we're talking about is, are the Democrats and the media rooting for people to become infected with the coronavirus because they view it as a way to point out the 
incompetence of Trump. I, I, yes, of course they are. These are sick, twisted people consumed with their hatred of President Trump. Yeah. Are you more likely, think about this, in America, are you more likely to encounter someone with coronavirus or someone who has had a corona beer? That's right. I used to be a big, I, I love Corona. You guys drink, I don't really drink. The only time I drink is when we have our cruises, really. But but I uh, I do like Corona. I know most people put a lime in Corona. I think Corona is best with a lemon in it. I'm a, I'm a rebel that way. But you're more, you're more likely to encounter someone with a Corona than with the coronavirus. I mean, it's absolutely no, no threat, no danger. And there is a lot of hype. I mean, look, I, when I was talking to Richie the bus driver, in the last hour, he was like really panicked. Do you notice what I asked him? How much news are you watch in a day? He says four or five hours, which means eight to 12 hours, right? He probably always has that on. Because people, you know, they're like, people lie about their gambling winnings being bigger than they are. They don't say about the losses. And when it comes to how much television they watch, they always downplay how much they're really watching. He said four to five hours. I think we could probably say eight to 12, you know? And the, the, the media, you know, television cable news, as much of its effectiveness as it is lost, it does have the ability to cause a panic under certain things. And uh, coronavirus and the financial scare that they're putting into people's minds, they are being very effective with this. Someone um, that's a, a friend of my family yesterday, late in the day, uh, took all their money out of the stock market. And I, I don't know how much they have in it, but it's, it's probably pretty significant. And that's a, that's a panic. And that's what they want people to do. They're hoping more and more people take their money out of the market because if more and more people take money out of the market, it brings it down. And they figure, well, you know, Stormy Daniels couldn't do it. The Mueller report couldn't do it. The impeachment trial couldn't do it. But if people, Trump's always talking about the 401ks. If people start to get concerned about their 401k, then they'll finally jump off the Trump train. This is what they don't understand. They'll never understand this. They'll never accept this. Uh, we will never abandon Trump. And if you notice, everything the Democrats and the media do, it's always another scheme, isn't it? They've always got a scheme. They've got no candidates. They're wrong on all the issues. Their candidates, uh, other than Bernie Sanders, are despised by the, their own voters. And Bernie Sanders is a communist. He's the best thing they got going. So they're always, and, and instead of trying to get a good candidate that's got some issues and is popular, they've always got some scheme to uh, uh, try to derail President Trump. You know, now they're talking about using the superdelegates to steal the nomination. A bunch of dishonest people. And I'll tell you, that clip I played at the end of the last hour about how the Democrats are going to go to the convention and let the delegates steal it from Bernie, you know, if you're a Democrat, that is reason enough not to vote Democrat when they're telling you that your vote doesn't matter. You know, oh, yeah, you get to vote in the presidential election. Yeah, but if, if the person, if your choice is only based on who they forced upon you, you know, what good is that vote? And when that guy said, I mean, let me play. The, this is amazing. This was MSNBC yesterday. This is a guy. He's a former uh, advisor to, to President Obama. This is what people need to remember. Uh, the Democratic Party has a party. The party decides its nominee. The public doesn't really decide the nominee. The public gets to vote for President of the United States, but people who are active in the party, who participate in the party, they decide the nominee. Superdelegates are very influential in the party. Also, delegates are very influential. And just because you're a pledged delegate for Bernie Sanders or a pledged delegate for Joe Biden doesn't mean when you get to the convention floor that you'll stay a delegate for Biden or Sanders. That's a process. A process. So when they go around and pay people off and bully them, you know, so to try to make people, well, listen, you, you don't understand. It's always been this way. The primaries are meaningless, symbolic. The delegates, the super delegates choose, but you get to vote for president. Well, what good is my vote for president if the only person I have to choose to vote for happens to be someone that the party forced upon us voters that we did not want in the primary? If you're a Democrat, forget about all these positions on gun control, abortion, the wall, climate change, 
this would be a big wake up call if the Republican Party. Now, the Republican Party tried this in 2016. Well, I don't think so. I think there was a, a I'll talk about that in a second. But if the Republican Party was going around saying your vote doesn't matter, we're going to pick the candidate, you get to vote for president, but only based on the person we force upon you, how many of you would not be voting Republican? Right? I, I think the Republican Party would dry up and fade away real quick. And if if I were a Democrat, I wouldn't I'd be done with this. If, that, if they did that at the convention, I'd be done. I wouldn't be. What, what's the point of voting? Right. In a situation like that. Now, what happened with the Republicans last time was different. The Republican there was talk of a brokered Republican convention in 2016. I don't think that was real. I think they were trying to set Trump up then. And if you remember Trump was doing very well, right? He had the delegates locked up. And then some Republicans started talking about a brokered convention and how the delegates choose and how a delegate, even though they've pledged to someone, they can break that pledge at the convention. I don't think any of that was ever planned because doing that in the modern era, when you know, they used to have these broker conventions when 80% uh, of the country was illiterate. And, and you couldn't see the conventions. They didn't even, they, you know, they, 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 tap, tap, tap on a telegraph is as close as you could get. They haven't had broker conventions in the modern era because the entire country is literate. We know what's going on and we can see it on TV now. But what went on in, at the 2016 Republican convention, <clears throat> they were talking about a broker convention. It was a lie. And this was the establishment of both parties working together to try to set up Donald Trump. And if you remember what happened, they said, oh, we haven't had a broker convention since whenever. No one knows, it, and no one knows how the rules work. No one really knows. We haven't had a broker convention. No one knows how, how does that process, oh, there's one person. There's one person, Paul Manafort. Remember Paul Manafort? And Paul Manafort was brought into the Trump campaign because the, the Republican party was talking about a broker convention and then all of the pundits and all the republicans says well you know we haven't had a broker convention since whenever the only person who knows the rules enough at the convention to uh, have a successful uh broker convention for donald trump is paul manafort and they, they called him a convention delegate wrangler right remember all of that and we didn't know it at the time till later now paul manafort's in prison but um, I believe they never planned on having a broker convention. I believe the whole thing was a lie to bring in Paul Manafort because they knew that he was a crook and that they brought him in to stain President Trump. They knew he had the nomination. They knew he might win at that point. He certainly was going to win the nomination, might win the presidency. And Paul Manafort was brought in as a way to have scandal around Trump because they knew he was a corrupt crook. I don't think they ever planned on having a brokered convention. I think the whole thing was a lie by the establishment. So our, you know, but the difference is President Trump defeated the Republican establishment. The new Republican st establishment is made up of Trump people. The Democrat establishment has not been broken by Bernie Sanders. Okay. And the brokered convention is probably going to happen. It's probably going to happen. And you know, Maybe them stealing the nomination from Bernie is the best thing for the country because having a socialist get the nomination, as I was talking about earlier, is so dangerous of a president. Maybe we want, the, do we want them to steal it from Bernie or do we want Bernie to win it? I think maybe the best for the country is um, for them to steal it from Bernie. Bernie getting the nomination is too dangerous long term for us. So I don't know. I'm not going to be upset if they steal it from Bernie. All right, listen, let's take our break. It's 16 minutes after 8 o'clock in the morning. I'm Brian. You're listening to The Steve Cain Show, Florida's longest running radio show on the radio since 1977. We'll be right back. Don't go anywhere. Mm -hmm. 
Right now, the U.S. is in the midst of a deadly opioid show. epidemic. In South Florida alone, hey, Barry, someone on. suffers an overdose every two hours, either from heroin, fentanyl, or some other prescription medication that's as close as the family medicine cabinet. In fact, mom and dad's medicine cabinet is frequently the gateway to the horrors of hardcore addiction down the road. Drug problems left unattended are only going to get worse. This is not something you can do on your own. You need expert professional help, and if your family is disintegrating in front of your eyes and you feel helpless, I'm here to tell you that help is available. Call my good friend Sal at the Edge Recovery, 561 area code 523-4325. This is his personal cell phone, 561-523-4325. If your loved one refuses treatment, the Edge Recovery will conduct an intervention and get them into the treatment plan that they need. The Edge Recovery offers every option from intervention Prevention, to 30-day rehab, to sober living, to counseling with a licensed therapist, as well as group therapy treatment. It's covered by most insurance, but no matter what your situation is, the Edge Recovery has options for you. Call Sal at the Edge Recovery. Do it today. 561 area code 523-4325. Again, that's Sal's personal cell phone. 561-523-4325. Listen to the Steve King Show on iHeartRadio. Just so Oh, yeah. And, you know, I've talked to a lot of people that have uh, called Sal and taken advantage of the great help they get at The Edge. You should, too. The Edge listed at stevekaneshow.com. All right. Look who we have on the line. Attorney Barry Siegel, our estate planning attorney. Barry Siegel, good morning. Good morning. How are you? I'm doing all right for a freezing morning. Man, it's cold. Day, isn't it? Oh yeah, Steve just came in. He's wearing a looks like he's uh, taking a trip to Alaska today in the coat he's wearing. I've been in South Florida for a long time. This is a very cold day. Oh man, it sure is. Yeah, but anyway, uh, yeah, um, I actually have been here in South Florida for a very long time. Born and raised here, and uh, uh, been in practice here uh, since. Gosh, the late 90s, and uh, here we are doing estate planning and elder law for a very long time, helping many, many families for a long time protect their loved ones, get that peace of mind that they need, not only to make sure that they leave their assets where they want it to go, make sure that people are protected, uh, the people they uh, leave their assets behind to are protected from lawsuits, divorces, probate, and even from themselves. Uh, God forbid they have a uh, issue with alcohol, gambling, drugs, or maybe they have special needs issues. There's so many issues that can come up, and that's why it's so important to review everything every so often, at least every three years, to make sure that we have a plan that's going to work with well, you know, I'll tell you, a lot of times uh, what happens when when people inherit money, uh, they have a similar happening as to when people win the lottery. You know, they go through the money very, very fast. And, uh, you know, and if, if you uh, uh, talk to Attorney Barry Siegel, you can set up your revocable living trust in a way to protect your heirs from themselves. And I'll tell you another thing that's very common, too. Uh, the divorce rate uh, is very high after inheritances come in for obvious reasons. And that's that's uh, something that I'm sure you spend a lot of time protecting um, uh, people from have happening as well. Give attorney Barry Siegel a call. His number toll-free, 855-FLA-3782. 1-855-FLA-3782. Online at SiegelLawGroup.com. All right, Barry, we will talk next week. Uh, all right, you too. Attorney Barry Siegel. Good morning. You're on the radio. Oh. Yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah. Well, this isn't, you know, when I, whenever I talk to uh, Al DeJohn, um, I feel like I'm talking to a telemarketer with a script, and especially with the tone that you just had. So you're making, you're attacking President Trump's pandemic plan 
could you please tell me what was his pandemic plan and what, are, what were, were, were the flaws that you find in it? CDC. No, that's, that's not true. But he had a pandemic plan. What happened was is they had a bunch of money for Ebola. That was handled, and they stopped funding Ebola because it was settled. Uh, no, no, no. You say that he had a pandemic plan. It is a failed plan. So could you tell me what his, his plan wasn't to defund the Centers for Disease Control. What was his plan on handling pandemics, and what are the flaws in that pandemic plan that you believe is a failed plan? Or, or, or I'll tell you what, just name one of the flaws. Yeah, let's, let's hear it. Excuse me. He didn't take money out of anything. That's that's not true. We're asking for something that was in his plan. You said he has a failed plan. His plan. My plan is to defund planning. That wasn't his plan. He had a plan. Uh, uh, I'll tell you who didn't have a plan. It was you before you called. Obviously. I am listening. Oh, yeah. Okay. This is okay. You've got this fantasy that you are a power pl I and I, I I'm reluctant to do this but you know cuz you know it involves talking to you and questioning your delusions but you've got this fantasy that you're a mover and shaker in Washington DC that you now live and work in DC and this is what I would like you to do okay and this is the last time I'm going to offer this to you okay and if you don't do this uh, every time you call we'll point out that you're a fraud and a liar Go get a newspaper, go to go get a newspaper, the Washington Post or the Washington Examiner today. It is February 28th, 2020. I'm not letting him off the hook. I'm letting the audience off the hook by ending the call. You asked him a great question. You had him back. He was obviously blowing wind. About the pandemic report? Yeah. Oh, I got bored with asking him that 12 times. Ask him the same question over and over? Ask him the same question, and uh, he either answers it or... Well, he didn't answer it, so I, I'm ending it with this. So go to the newspaper machine in Washington, get a Washington Post, take a photograph of you in front of something in Washington, D.C., that is clearly Washington, D.C., hold up today's newspaper with the, today's date, okay, which is Friday, the 28th of February, 2020, or from this point forward, you'll be Al the John, the fraud liar. You got, we'll never again accept it. And um, you, you'll do that, and then we'll talk to you when you get us the picture. Oh, you want to talk to this, Jerry? Yes, I want to hear what, his, what the plan um, he's talking about is. What is the, the, the scheme or the plan that you said that uh, Trump had? Well, Give me a, get, tell me what the plan is. Tell me one thing about the plan. Can you tell me what you referred to this fraudulent plan? I want you to tell me one thing about the plan so that we can know that you're not totally full of crap. All right? That he didn't cut the money off the budget. The only thing we're cutting is this phone call. Yeah. But 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 I'm telling you the thing. The hostage video with the newspaper. No, no more. You're done. Get take a take a photograph of you with today's paper in front of a Washington landmark. You get us that photograph, and uh, then we'll be happy. You're on the radio. Good morning. Uh, I was doing okay till Al squeezed through. What well, do you think the Democrats are setting this whole thing up? When you say this whole thing, what is the thing that you're referring? You talking about coronavirus? Yeah, they are. Yes, they're 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 planning on stealing it from Bernie. Yeah. Well, they've got. I mean, they have to make allowances for different things that may happen. They 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 don't have everything set up. They they, they their plan will evolve as the events unfold. You know, if, if, if and the event we're talking about is largely uh, going into the convention with Bernie having a lead in the delegate count, but not a majority of delegates. Not, you yeah, know, I'm thinking Hillary, Hillary might jump in. Too. Listen, here's what's going on. I don't know. All these possibilities. Maybe it'll be Ronald McDonald. Well, he, if, he, they've if, already if, stolen. If, if, once it's an open convention, anybody can. No, it's not an open convention. They've had. It becomes an open 
they've had three, they've had three statewide, uh, I'm sorry, sorry, I didn't want to do the endless speculation on the names. Um, the three votes they've had, Nevada, Iowa, and um, I forgot the, the second one, what are they, New Hampshire. Bernie Sanders has won the majority vote in each of them, each of them. They stole the delegates in Iowa and gave the majority to Buttigieg, who lost by thousands of votes to Bernie Sanders. They split them evenly in New Hampshire, where Bernie Sanders won by thousands of votes. Okay? And uh, he won by Nevada by big margin, too. He's won the first three contests. They've already stolen delegates from him. He is the favorite to win South Carolina. Um, the uh, other Democrats have had disasters happen in South Carolina, all of them, except Bernie. Bernie is the only Democrat not to have a problem in South Carolina in the last week. And, uh, and then Tuesday, there's a whole bunch of states. He's the favorite in most of those as well. So it's not an open convention. They're talking about an open convention to try to legitimize the theft from Bernie. What, what, when is the day of the... South Carolina? It's tomorrow. Tomorrow. Tomorrow is South Carolina. He is the favorite to win. The blacks ran Pete off the street the other day in South Carolina. They, uh, he ran away, protected by female staff members, jumped in an SUV and sped away when blacks uh, started chanting at him, you cannot be our president to Mayor Pete. They, uh, black voters have condemned uh, Biden, Bloomberg, Elizabeth Warren, all of them. Bernie is the only one I've not seen one negative thing said about from a Democrat voter in South Carolina. Well, he seems to have a commanding lead, according to the polls, going into tomorrow's election. He's got a lead everywhere. He, he's not going to win every primary, but he is he is the front runner by far. He's won every primary by thousands of votes, and it's not been. And they're only talking about an open convention and not undecided to legitimize the theft. They plan on stealing it from Bernie. And that's there, there's no division. There's no one even close to Bernie Sanders in support of the Democrat Party. No one. No one. Even Van Jones has said that the only hope they have and, and it, Rahm Emanuel and Van Jones have said the only hope they have is if the other candidates join forces together behind one of them against Bernie is the only hope they have to legitimately win. And they're not going to do that because they're too egocentric. So that there's no, there's really in the Democrat field, there is no contest. It's Bernie by by a mile. Although, if you listen to the... Pundits that have been wrong for five years. Uh, not pundits that have been wrong. If you listen to a, a cross-section of talk radio... Yeah. Uh, you would discover that, in fact, going into South Carolina, Biden seems to... No. Have things lined well, up. they're not following the news then, because... I have seen, uh, he went to South Carolina. What they mean by that is he went to South Carolina and paid off the black preachers, okay? And I've seen interviews with many black Democrats in South Carolina who are pissed off at, uh, but I have one I played yesterday. Let me see if I, st I don't know if I still have this. No, I don't have, I had a clip yesterday w where they were interviewing blacks in South Carolina. I don't have it today. I played it yesterday. But uh no. He is not the favorite among blacks in South Carolina. No, no, the only one with any favorable data out of South Carolina is Bernie Sanders. Did you see the video of, of Buttigieg? Oh, my goodness. It's, I, I haven't seen it on TV once. You're talking about the one where he... They ran him off? Oh, no. He, went, he was in South Carolina, and there was a demonstration of black voters in South Carolina... Uh, a, a demonstration in favor of raising the minimum wage to $15 an hour. Pete surprised them with a surprise appearance, presidential uh, candidate, walked up, started speaking. They ran him off. They started chanting, you cannot be our president, all in unison. He ran away. His female staff members surrounded his car, his SUV. He jumped in and they sped off at a high rate of speed. They ran him off. That's, that's uh, 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 Pete. Uh, Booty judge in South Carolina. Blacks have been rising up against Biden. No, but Bernie Sanders is the favorite to win. Favorite to win tomorrow, and whoever wins that, and he's and he's got all of the momentum for the Tuesday uh, primaries too. He's the favorite everywhere. Well, whoever wins tomorrow, has a leg up on the uh, yeah. All right, we're going to take a break. You're listening to the Steve Kane Show with Brian Craig. We'll return after this. 
we want to proudly welcome a new sponsor to the Steve Kane Show, and it's Ace Hardware. Not just any Ace Hardware, but two special Ace Hardware stores in our area. The first is Ace Hardware, located at 65 South Federal Highway in Deerfield Beach, just a quarter mile south of Hillsborough Boulevard on the west side of Federal Highway. And Beach Ace Hardware at 232 Commercial Boulevard, Lauderdale by the Sea, half a block west of A1A. If you own a house or condo, you would do yourself a favor to visit one or both of these special stores. There is such a different shopping in these stores compared to the depot type stores. We've got to go there from here. I'll meet you over there somewhere and then we'll follow. selection in all their departments that will save you from running around from store to store. And you can get help from their own Well, meet me over near the air. It's a 1030. You got to meet me over on Oakland Park somewhere. We'll figure it out. East of 95. Treat their customers and you will become a happy customer too. We're going to Federal. They sell is almost endless. It includes plumbing, electrical, sprinkler parts, fasteners of every kind, garden tools, including the largest selection of steel garden equipment. Plus, they are an authorized steel repair center. Let's not well, let's just worry about the show now. Yeah. Custom blended paints, major brand power tools, including Craftsman, Weber barbecue grills, plus other top notch brands that are delivered to your home with free assembly. They have the largest selection of key blanks, many down to the color you choose. Even the key fob remote for your doors are sold at these stores, price lower than the car dealer. Screens are custom made, glass is cut to size. I could go on and on, but you get the idea. They will make your life easier and save you time and money by recommending the right products for your job. Again, the two Ace Hardware locations are Ace Hardware at 365 South Federal Highway, Deerfield Beach, just a quarter mile south of Hillsboro Boulevard on the west side of Federal Highway, and Beach Ace Hardware at 232 Commercial Boulevard, Lauderdale by the Sea, half a block west of A1A. Or call with any questions, 954-531-6265, 954-531-6265, and make sure to tell them you heard about them on the Steve Kane Show. Ace is the place with the if you suffer with diabetes, there's a 25% chance that you'll develop a foot ulcer that can lead to severe health consequences, including amputation. At the sole authority, at little or no cost, you can receive your very own therapeutic shoes and custom inserts. Medicare recipients are entitled to one pair of quality diabetic shoes and three custom inserts. Call the sole authority today, 954-597-7060. The Steve Kane Show is brought to you by attorney Barry Siegel at the Siegel Law Group. Avoid probate with a revocable living trust. $350 for single people, $450 for married couples. When you complete your trust with attorney Barry Siegel, he will give you a $100 gift certificate to Tavolino Italian Restaurant in Coral Springs. Call the Siegel Law Group with nine offices in South Florida, including downtown Fort Lauderdale, Coral Gables, and downtown Miami. 1-855-FLA-3782. Listen to the Steve King Show on iHeartRadio. Just search for WW. All right, we're back. Do you agree with me that the coronavirus is uh, fake news? Uh, no, I don't think it's fake news. Uh, oh, it's an epidemic? I think there's two different issues which we are... Uh, com com what's the word? Conflicting. You mix two issues together? Yeah. What is it called? Conflicting? <laughs> I knew it until you said it. Now I'm confused. Anyway... Whatever that Confusing, is, yeah. I think that's what's going on. I mean, I think there's a realistic problem in terms of finance because so all these things that are made outside of the Steve, United States... Steve, they're... Uh, oh, no, no, you're talking about the economony. But yeah, coro the yeah. coronavirus is no threat in this country. There are more people well, point, in a block yeah. radius that have this virus. Is it, is it fair to make any statement like that? Because we can only speak about... The, virus as it appears now as what we can see but yeah now, we don't know what's out there oh that we don't know about yet right in america there, there, at nine o'clock because that's when the workday begins there will be more people in this building by nine or nine thirty in the morning than have coronavirus in america and that's including those those people they they brought back to the country from japan you know so now it's it's well, not an those are? it's like there's like maybe 60 people Total and 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 most of them are the people they brought back from Japan. But they've been wandering around the United States. No, they're in isolation. They're in isolation. Now they're in isolation. They're in isolation. That's what the president they said. They went directly into isolation. Well, unfortunately, no. Well, that's. But. <laughs> you, you don't. It's no work. The media, 
are very irresponsible. They're trying to cause a panic because they are, even Fox, the never Trumpers over there hate Trump. And anything that they think will harm Trump, they're going to hype up, whether it's the, uh, they're trying to cause a financial crisis, they're trying to cause a, a crisis of fear over the coronavirus. You know, the best thing people can do right now is not watch cable news because they're, they're so panicking you. The best thing right now is to be uninformed? No, 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 no. Get your news from the internet, yeah. the internet, where the real news is. The media are panicking people. They, they, I mean, they, they, you know, the Democrats were saying weeks ago that uh, a recession would help them win, that maybe we should have a recession to help beat Trump. And now they got it. They're pushing it, you know, with what's going on in the market. Yeah, you cannot you can trust what's going on in the news. W both the virus and the and the financial news, they want a recession. They want they and I think they wouldn't be I, I think the media would not be upset if uh, a few hundred people I got coronavirus. I share, I share a lot of your misgivings about the yeah. mainstream media, but I, I watch a lot, I've watched a lot of all I've, I've broadened my uh, my spectrum out a little bit since this thing has been going on, and I do watch you know I mix in a little CNN. With my Fox and all that it's stuff. all the same. They're getting experts from all over. Yeah. No one's gonna Neil Cavuto hates me. Trump. It, Neil Cavuto hates no Trump. No one's going to convince me that Neil Cavuto is making stuff up. Oh, yeah. He, he hates Trump. Trump. Hates no, Trump. no, no, no. The, down, the stock market's down. That is true. That is true. The stock market is down. It's down because from what I can figure, and I'm not an expert on this kind of stuff, I mean, I know about precious metals because of my relationship with William Youngerman, but I'm, I'm not an expert on matters financial. But I, I know when a problem when I see one. And the problem here is yeah. in the supply line thing they talk about. It, that they're, it's okay, real. please. No, it, it's real because they're causing... Listen, the, the... What are they causing? Tell, tell they're, me. I'm, I'm telling you. What the media are doing is causing a panic over coronavirus. They're t and they're all they're doing is all the people I'm watching are interviewing experts. That's all. I'm yeah, doing. lying experts. It, it, all the, they they all they do is interview experts, and they've been doing it for five years, and they all hate Trump. No matter what cable network you're watching, and for the most part, they all hate Trump, so they all want negative news to Trump. They are. Uh, causing panic with coronavirus outside of this country to give a fear of a shutdown of the supply chain from goods from Asia. And that's that's having an impact on the stock market. I mean, there's a billion screaming Chinamen. How many of them have the coronavirus? And how, you know what I'm talking about? And how, yeah, come on. We don't know. Well, there's no way to know. It's China. But I so promise you, so it, it's... There's no way to know. How it's Duke Kane Show. Just automatically yeah. assume that what you're hearing is that No, no, no. I, w w w the media are making a bigger deal out of the trouble the coronavirus is in China to cause a panic with the supply. See, the financial people are okay losing money right now, the big financial people in the market, because they're losing more money on the renegotiated trade deals with China. They want Trump out because he's turned their entire business plan upside down by renegotiating the international trade agreements. You know, so they're okay. they're losing money now, but it's peanuts that compared to what they're losing with the new trade agreements. You want to take some calls? Yes. All right. You're on the radio. Good morning. Hi. Good morning, guys. It's John from Wellington. Hey, John. How are you? Good. I just wanted to uh, remind people that back in, it must have been around 2003 or so, the press uh, got wind of this uh, virus called the bird flu. And if you listen to what the mainstream media had to say, the bird flu was going to kill us all. That's right. I forgot about that. Don't forget mad cow disease, too. Remember that one? Cow disease is going to kill everybody, too. <laughs> so are you, putting, are you putting what's going on today in the same category with mad cow's disease and bird flu? Yes. Yes. Yes, I am. And Only um, it, it's a form of influenza. It's going to come and it's going to go. Now, as far as its impact goes on our stock market, before the coronavirus appeared, the stock market uh, reached uh, heights of very, very near 30,000. Once this coronavirus news fizzles out in a few weeks, it's going to surpass 30,000. We're going to get our stock market back, and it's going to reach heights that 
we've never seen before. Well, that's not going to happen until after the election when Trump wins. That's when it's going to take off. As oh, Trump would say, like a rocket ship. Up. And also, just to let you know, I'm looking at a report right now. It's in my hand right now. And it says the CDC estimates that as many as 56,000 people die from the flu each year. Not the bird flu, not coronavirus, just the plain old flu. No, you're, you're, I know, I know, that's a staggering number. I mean, that's, that's crazy. You know, like, like I was saying, you're more likely to be killed by a drunk driver who's drunk on Corona beer than getting the coronavirus from someone in America. Now, let me, let me ask you, let me ask you, caller, though. No, let me, let me ask you this, caller. You know, the, the, one of the problems with the news media, there's a lot of problems with the media, you know. But one of the problems is they're owned by these huge international conglomerates whose world has been turned up, whose whole business plan was based on these out-of-balance trade deals. These out-of-balance trade deals didn't happen because the government officials were stupid. They've been selling our country out for decades. And when Trump renegotiates the trade deals, in particular with China, it, it turns their business plan upside down, doesn't it? And they want him out because of it. That's true. It's all true. Everything you're saying is true. But it also is true that disasters like the bird flu or the coronavirus make people watch TV more. They're doing it for ratings. Yeah, very irresponsible. And, you know, they, that overuse of how many times a day do you hear the breaking news sounder on Fox News, Steve? Oh, my goodness. Every time you feel like you need to go to the bathroom or get a drink from the fridge, breaking news! So you come back and don't leave the TV. You know, you, Well, I'll tell, breaking news, oh, we're now going to read a tweet from Ben Shapiro. You know, listen, this is, I learned, I picked up on this. I picked up on this from Howard Stern. Howard Stern, this is on Netflix. Uh, David Letterman's show on Netflix, he interviewed Howard Stern, and he talked about his rating success against these morning powerhouse shows, okay, when he was coming up the ranks. And he said that radio ratings are done by the quarter hour. And he said, what I learned was, is do something outrageous when I'm getting to the quarter hours to keep people listening to the next quarter hour. And that was kind of like one of the secrets to his rating success. That's what the cable news do. They use that breaking news. It used to be if there was breaking news, America was under attack, an American plane was hijacked. Now breaking news literally are tweets from people. And the breaking news is a ratings gimmick to keep you into the next quarter hour, like Stern was talking about. I'm telling you, that I've, when's the last time breaking news, the last time the breaking news sounded was breaking news was the Boston bombing at the marathon. I, I, that I could, yeah, yeah. So you can't, the media, Steve, are all liars. If, if Fox might as well be CNN, you know, when it when it comes to this, uh, in fact, maybe they're worse because they're pretending to be something they're they're not most of the day. You know. All right. So all yeah. The the Appreciate the call. The big, the big, the big, the big money guys that really manipulate Wall Street. The Gordon the Gecko, the, the get the Gordon Gecko kind from the movie, you know, Wall Street. You know. Their worlds have been destroyed by the renegotiation of the trade deals. They want Trump out. And if they have to take a hit for a few months in the market to try to get people to wake up to Trump and vote him out, it's worth it to them to get their old scam trade deals I, back. I think if that, in fact, is true, I think they're misguided in their thinking. Because I well, think they're desperate. The scarier things get, the more people are likely to hang on to Trump, not to get rid of him. That seems like a weakness in their... No, no, people vote their pocketbook. Yeah, but, yeah, and if it's because of Trump that this is... Are going to look for stability. Mm -hmm. and let's face it, when it comes to stability... They're not thinking rationally. Because there's... Look at Nancy causing a panic the other day. It's too late! He fired the experts! We're done! You know, they're, they're not thinking rationally. She's the leader of the Democrat Party. Time to break. Let's do it. We'll be back uh, with the Gold Report after this. 95.3 FM, 96.9 FM, 103.9 FM, and AM 1470. WWNN Pompano Beach is the Florida Money Talk Network.
This is Lori Kane, and I want to tell you about Brighton Dental Care. I just had a lot of work done, and I avoided going to the dentist for a lot of years because I was afraid of the cost. But I went to Brighton Dental for my free consultation, which, by the way, he offers to all Steve Kane listeners. I had two cavities. I needed a crown on top and a crown on the bottom. If I were a horse, they would have put me down. So I scheduled my appointment for the next Saturday because Brighton Dental has Saturday appointments available, and they saved me a ton of money. And I will be a patient for life. Don't what? let yeah. cost stop you from a little taking bit, yeah. care of your teeth. Brighton Dental gives Steve Kane listeners incredible discounts on all dental procedures, well, what's the problem? just like they gave me. Prices are so reasonable, you don't have to worry about the cost. So call Brighton Dental today at 954-922-4633. That's 954-922-4633. You can visit them at brightondental.com and tell them Lori Kane sent you. This is Adrienne Kane, Steve's daughter, and I want to tell you about my my pillow mattress. I was talking to Dad, and I was telling him I wasn't sleeping at night. I was tossing and turning all night long. Yeah. I had an old, worn out, lumpy, bumpy mattress that was so uncomfortable I wasn't getting any sleep. A couple of days later, there was a knock at the door, and it was a my pillow mattress. I slept on it that night, and ever since I've been sleeping the whole night through. No more tossing, no more turning, and when my alarm goes off in the morning, I'm up up and ready to go and well rested give your kids grandkids spouse or yourself the gift of a good night's sleep with a my pillow mattress go to mypillow.com and use the promo code cane k-a-n-e when you use the promo code cane you can save up to 300 dollars off your my pillow mattress they come in all sizes from twin to california king and every size in between go to mypillow.com and be sure to use the promo code cane k-a-n-e and give the the gift of a my pillow mattress worth its weight Over and restful in sleep all right we're back we're back show on iHeartRadio. just search for wwnn all right we are back the time we uh we've been waiting for here on the steve kane show especially in times of financial upheaval we want what is our rock here on the steve kane show the man who Knows the most, as far as I'm concerned, concerning matters of finance, of course, his major expertise, the precious metals. We have learned so much about the precious metals through the years, thanks to William Youngerman, advising clients on trends and movements in the gold market for over 50 years. William, bring some order to what's going on out there. We've been, everybody's going crazy. What do you think's happening? Well, uh, I can tell you that uh, the, the precious metals are uh, responding pretty much the way we uh, anticipate in most of these scenarios, and that they've certainly run up uh, dramatically as a result of this uh, flight to safety that we've seen as the stock market has uh, dropped over like 3,500 points this week alone, and uh, the uh, financial, institute, uh, financial assets that people hold dearly uh, are becoming threatened as they were hitting record highs. Um, the market has uh, sold off dramatically with the interest rates and the flight to safety uh, for gold and for the treasuries uh, hitting uh, multi-year highs uh, and the 10-year bond getting down this morning as low as 1.15. These are numbers we've never seen in history. The, uh, the market right now on 10-year around 1.2. The stock market poised to lose another 550 points this morning so far. Uh, this put gold higher yesterday. Uh, it was the only metal that went up other than palladium. Uh, gold was uh, up $3.40, closing out yesterday at $1,644.20. The high so far on this rally that we've seen uh, was around $1,685 intraday. Silver uh, was down $0.14 cents yesterday at $17.75. Platinum was down $11 at 901 and palladium uh, up $83 at $27.54. This morning gives us that buying opportunity that we have been looking for for gold to pull back to that major support area and breakout area of around $16.20. And that's exactly where we got to this morning. Uh, gold being down to around $16.20. And uh, right now, gold down $22 at $1,622.20 the ounce. Great buying opportunity. If you haven't purchased gold, sure. this would be a great day to start. Uh, Silver down 65 cents uh, as, the, as the industrial metals as a whole are out of favor right now in the midst of a, uh, a crisis in uh, the economies of the world when you're when you're seeing um, 
the, uh, the problems with many companies <clears throat> unable to perform their tasks as a result of this uh, uh, virus. And um, therefore, we've seen uh, a lot of these metals coming down, uh, silver down 65 cents this morning at $17.10 the ounce, bouncing off that $17 area of support, a great buying opportunity for mm -hmm. silver, uh, which has reached well over 90 to 1 ratio to gold. Platinum down $31 this morning at $870, and palladium down $144 after yesterday's $83 rise, uh, right now at $2,610 the ounce. So, again, this is the day that you'll want to take advantage of it. We could see some pivotal turns in these markets. Um, as I said, the stock market over poised to open even $500 more lower this morning. Even that could uh, take a turnaround, and I think the metals are about ready to turn around and head for that $1,700 Bank of America has been predicting a $1,700 price uh, for gold, and uh, we're inclined to agree with that right now. You, you therefore would suggest if somebody is going in with limited resources, uh, you would suggest rather than take what seems like the obvious play, which would be gold, uh, with the safety factor there, uh, but it, it looks to me like the real bar Bargains are on some of the uh, other metals other than gold. Which would, which way would you go and why? Absolutely. I think silver and platinum have the, the greatest uh, potential uh, for the upside percentage move at this point. Once gold uh, starts reaching towards new highs, these metals will, will bounce dramatically, especially silver, which has huge uh, uh, percentage uh, possibility moves. Uh, the, the, and gold will be the one that will pull these metals up ultimately as people look for bargains in the metals. And the um, uh, platinum also, I'm, I'm anticipating platinum will again take off uh, going forward into uh, as we come out of a uh, situation that we're in. Uh, I think the uh, automobile industry will start uh, using platinum much more again in, in the catalytic converters, having proven the fact that palladium is just too rare metal to continue to use at uh, at um, uh, three times the price of platinum. So uh, that being said, uh, you got to take and, and, and balance your portfolio with a little bit of all of these metals. But uh, right now, certainly silver is a, a great buy, and gold is a great buy. If you haven't purchased any gold, uh, now's the time to start adding, you know, getting a position in that metal because I think we're going much higher on that also. All right, and if you need to discuss it with a person who is a knowledgeable expert, you can always drop by William Youngerman. He'll be more than happy to answer any questions you might have. Uh, he's located at 150 East Palmetto Park Road in Boca. That's the Bank of America building. You'll find William on the first floor directly across from the bank. Uh, you can reach him by phone at 1-800-327-5010 or go to the website, and a great website it is too, like a trip to a museum at williamyoungerman.com. William, well, we'll keep watching, and uh, let's see, today is uh, going into the weekend, so we'll talk to you on Monday, all right? Oh, okay, have a great weekend. Thank you, you take care. You too. We're back. Oh, man, I tell you. It's going to be a good weekend because the Democrats are going to be in total disarray after South Carolina. So, uh, I'm trying to follow you, and uh, so, so you, you're predicting what? For, for South Carolina. Bernie Sanders winning. He's the favorite to win. And so because, I mean, I know Joe Biden got Biden's some... Biden talk is all hype. Yeah. Yeah. Right. What, what makes you think he could win? You know, well, he is run... You asked the question. Okay. <clears throat> because watching television as extensively as I do, and there are people who I... Tr experts I trust... Yeah. That I hear on television, there are others that I know or not. I know I can spot the phonies pretty quick. Yeah. Uh, but I think they've done some heavy, heavy, extensive polling, and I think that they've tried to draw the line, and they have a. Uh, it's much more organized, I think, in South Carolina than it's yeah. been up till now. And I. No way. All the reports of surveys are that. Um, Biden's going to win, mm -hmm. uh, at least in South Carolina. We'll find out. I, I I think Bernie's the favorite. If he doesn't come in first, he'll be second. If Biden wins, it'll be close. I think Biden will come in like third, maybe fourth. You know, here or second by far to Bernie. Well, if Biden comes in third, he's finished. Yeah. Well, someone pointed out on CNN the other day, I don't know how many times Biden's run for president, but it's been... He's, he's, never, won. he's never won a single primary anywhere. 
So all of a sudden, a man who has run in dozens and dozens of races, if you add up all these states, never won one, all of a sudden, he's got everything organized, you're, and he's going to win? Mean, not him, the party. Mm -mm. The party is organized. The, the party has lost control of their machine. Well, that's, that's what we're going to find yeah. over the weekend. Yeah, a man who's never won is going to all of a sudden win. Well, it ain't going to happen. Remind me, when we get off here, I want to call Ed. We'll have Ed in here. I'm going to invite Ed to join us Monday if he is in town. He is our political expert. And it will be interesting to get his, his evaluation yeah. of, the, of the election as it uh, exists in South Carolina. And... Uh, yeah. We'll do that. What, do you, what does that mean, Greg? Um, no, the show's over. Oh, that means the show's trying over. Trying to tell you to wind it up, yeah. Okay. The show is over. That's it, my friends. Have a great, great weekend. I wonder how many of you will be glued to your television set like I am. I've really become an addict, there's no question. A, a political watcher. I've always been, but it's gotten a little worse, let's put it that way. So until Monday, on behalf of Brian, I'm Steve. You know who you are. See you Monday, and God bless America. Insurance policy only pays someone if you die. The new All right, guys, make sure you subscribe, all right?